Hey guys welcome back to my channel. What if Naruto x Tsunade pervy mommy pervy hokage. Movie. The sun rose over the village. The five faces on the hokage tower beam under the amazing bright rays provided by the potent sun. These aforementioned beams also affect the face of a blissfully sleeping teen that promptly rolls over. He grumbles as the alarm clock goes off and with a flick of his hand, the alarm clock is sent flying into the wall before it breaks. I'll fix that another time foolish alarm. The teen mumbled. The boy is about to drift off yet again to a land unknown, before small yips grow in range and volume before coming to his ear, as a very warm tongue appears and licks his face. Knock it off Kayashi. Mumbles Jonin Namaka's Yuzumaki Naruto, all-around savior of the shinobi nation. The fox, with red fur and two tails does not and continues to lick away at the sleeping teen. Naruto sighs before getting up and laying his back on his bedpost. As he awakes, his sight leads him to looking around his huge bedroom. His bed was king size with silk white covers and too many pillows to count. Window to his right was covered with navy blue drapes and a door that led to a balcony, if you would move the drapes. To his left was a huge walk-in closet with the door open, many different jonin outfits and different colored flak jackets visible. A pile of shoes and boots lay out upon the floor. His black tiles were filled with dirt and other things from his constant moving through the day. Next to the closet was a huge chest draw with four drawers and a nice hunter green. One drawer is open, and a neatly folded stack of white t-shirts are visible. The door to his room was three paces from the drawer. On the right of the door was a wall filled with many weapons. Kunai, three-pronged kunai, ninjato, daggers, shuriken, an anbu mask, anbu armor, a cloak with blood and flames at the bottom, and a huge clan painting of a whirlpool on the ceiling, in dedication to his mother and the Yuzumaki clan of whirlpool. In the corner between the weapons and window is a mannequin dressed in hokage robes with a jonin outfit under it and the hat. All in all, his room was pretty nice. Naruto stretched before picking up the medium-sized fox in his arms and walked out the door. As he turns left and passes four doors on his left and staircases leading downstairs to his right, he opens up the door directly in front of him into his bathroom. Black and grey marble was everywhere within this room which consisted of the tub, the sink, and the floor. He placed the fox to the floor and began his morning routine. Brush teeth, shower, fix up his golden hair that reminded many people of his father from back in the day, and then head on out for the day. Dressed up in standard Kanoha uniform and putting his hit I-8 on forehead before grabbing his pouches and equipment, he specifically puts on two pouches on both thighs and picks up two cruel-looking daggers before spinning them and putting them in two side holsters on the outsides of his thighs. As he heads downstairs he stops halfway as he remembered something rather important. It's my day off. Naruto sighed before going back upstairs and disrobing. He returns everything neatly, a habit beaten into him by Tsunade, before putting on a skin-tight navy blue shirt and white pants with a black jacket, halfway zipped up, and matching crystal-clean white ninja sandals. He ties his hit I-8 around his neck and yips to the fox, which swiftly jumps onto him and wraps his body around his neck. Let's enjoy this day no Kayashi. Said Naruto as he steps outside, his fox companion yipping in agreement. Two minutes later, Kanoha shopping district, Ino Yamanaka was bored. Lane bored. There was nothing to do today. No missions, her parents gave her the day off, half of the ninja she knew or wanted to hang out with were currently on missions, the only Kanoichi she could think of to relax with was busy, and then that was not mentioning her roommate Sakura, who was working endless shifts in the hospital. I hate days like this, mumbled Ino. That makes two of us, said a deep voice. Ino whipped around as only one person had such a distinctive voice. Ah Naruto. Said Ino as she smiled at the said person who was walking up towards her. She had to look away swiftly to hide her blush. Who knew that Naruto would fill out like this? There she say it, after saving Kanoha during the pain attack a few years ago, she began to see Naruto in a different light. She just never got the chance to hang out with him. Naruto almost stopped walking once he seen the danger smirk on her face almost. So Naruto-kun, what are you up to on this fine day? No missions for you I see. Does that mean you're free? Asked Ino in a semi-interested voice, the way she sounded, Naruto couldn't be so sure she was up to something. Most blondes were. Yeah, free day for me, replied Naruto as he scratched the fox on his neck. His eyebrows rose as he seen Ino sway her hips towards him, causing him to sweat just a little bit. Ino wasn't ugly. She had pale blonde hair that went down to her mid-back, today she was wearing purple sneakers with the tightest of blue jeans. Her outfit ended with a purple figure was exquisite, testifying to the long hours she spent training her body to be at its peak. Naruto could still see the hidden seal on her back that represented her being a part of Anbu. She was head interrogator, and an excellent one at that. She continued her strut before stopping at his face and invading his privacy, not that he minded. As they were nose to nose, Ino smirked and latched onto his hands. Then we're going shopping. Since you make so much money on those missions you keep talking about, I want some shoes, some dresses, a new purse, and some bathing suits, some. 
Naruto sighed as he was led to his fate of spending more money. He didn't mind though. It was at least something to do. Besides, how bad could it be? Three hours later, are you serious? Yes I am serious. I refuse, you're crazy. There is no way I am doing that. Oh come on just take it off. I am not taking it off. You can't make me. Are you sure? Do you really want to test me in making you do something against your will? ARRGGH. This was the scene that people were seeing and trying to stay out of. If anyone knew of these two blondes, it was that they were extremely headstrong and determined to not do anything they didn't want to. As it was though, Naruto was being asked, better yet, forced, to put on a shirt. But not just any shirt. Shirts, in a plural sense. 17 shirts of various shades, colors and styles. In addition to jeans, shorts, slacks, shoes and hats and coats. Naruto just did not want to be bothered with that. He already spent loads of money feeding Ino shoe addiction, why did she love so much purple? Purple this, purple that, it was too much. Actually, take that back. He forgot he was a fiend for orange as well. So now he had Ino in his face growling, to which he returned with equal fervor. He refused to back down from this challenge. He was Yuzumaki Naruto. Jonin of Kanahagakur, son of the fourth Hokage, taught by the legendary Kakashi Haddock the copycat Nin and the late Toad San and Jiraiya. No. Was a very viable option. Ino was about to choke him before coming to her senses and smirking. Naruto did not like the sign of that as he knew how devious she could be. Watch me Naruto-kun you will put on everything. Said a deviously smiling Ino as her hand slowly went to her back pocket so Naruto would not know what was about to happen. You can't make Naruto stop talking as in a swift second his shirt was ripped and slowly the article of clothing fell to the floor which caused a chain reaction of stopping women and slowing down time. Strong and finely tuned muscles were the thoughts running through her mind about Naruto's body, extremely muscular and sturdy. She should have done this earlier. Naruto was a hunk. The feel for him began to manifest even more than before. Naruto watched in slow motion as his shirt fell to the floor. He began breaking out in hives as he knew the effect this would cause. Drooling women with hearts in their eyes would rush him if he was around when the shirt hit the floor. He grumbled at the blushing and smiling Ino. That was dirty of her to have a hidden kunai in her pocket. In a yellow flash Naruto was in the dressing room with all of the clothing before the shirt hit the ground and out the room, at the register with his shirt miraculously taken along with Ino. Ino smiled. Hold you, she chirped as she latched onto his arm and leaned into his shoulder. The males are so troublesome, mumbled Naruto, channeling Shikamaru as he began paying and putting his newly acquired clothing in a huge storage seal. Good thing he decided to take these with him. Before anything else was said, a huge grumbling noise was heard. Ino blushed as she looked away from a surprised Naruto who soon after laughed. Let's go to my place and get some food, said Naruto as he led her to some food. Ino blushed at that but said nothing as she knew he meant strictly food. They were friends, sort of. Ino blanched at the thought that she really didn't know much about Naruto. All these years of watching him make a fool of himself, asking Sakura on dates, pranking the teachers and being a loud mouth. Who knew he would be coming one of, if not, the strongest shinobi in Konoha. She smiled. Time to ask questions and learn about Naruto. Fine by me. So Naruto what do you like to? The two sat by the pond in Naruto's estate watching the goose, frog and sunset while enjoying some sandwiches that Naruto's clones whipped up. Ino had learned a lot about Naruto and him about her. After the harsh story about his life before he got older, which made Ino curl into him crying, making him blush a bit, they continued talking and realized they both shared a love of flowers, training, motivating and annoying people at the same time, even read the same manga, which brought a surprised funny face from Naruto, causing Ino to laugh very loud and joke on him about how his face looking like a gaping fist. Naruto suddenly caught a gleam as he held some of the pie he had made. Hey Ino, Naruto said, as he discreetly cocked his hand, holding the pie back. What is it Naruto K. Ino never got to finish her sentence as a wet splash sound landed on her face. She slowly widened her eyes in surprise and touched her face to remove the substance dripping down her face, ignoring the loud sounds of laughter. Look at your face now Ino. You look very sweet and you smell like the best of pies, laughed Naruto as he rolled on his side and tried to push himself up despite his gut hurting from his laughter. Hi, on her face, grown by Naruto, he must die, Naruto-kun whispered a voice. For some odd reason, every animal in the clearing left, including his foxy companion, the sky grew dark, the roses withered and died and killer intent began leaking. No one, jokes with Ino's face, no one, you, were the words that came from Ino, her head down and body shaking, before a small chuckle came from her throat. Her hand found her way to some soy sauce that came with the rice they ate. Her other hand grabbed onto his shirt. She'll pay. Shrieked Ino as she tossed the soy sauce onto Naruto's face and hair. The two then began a food fight before Naruto tackled Ino, and they went rolling down the hill they were on before they fell into the pond and came up to start tossing water on each other's face, all the while laughing like little schoolchildren. 
The two continued until Naruto swam towards her. Grabbing her around the waist he then brought her and himself underwater before emerging and then throwing her back in, laughing. She never rose up. But he felt himself being lifted up before landed in the water back first as Ino emerged laughing. Naruto came up and the two panted in exhaustion before Naruto smiled. You look beautiful when you're soaking wet. Did you know that? Anyway, let's go get cleaned up, Naruto innocently said as he made his way out the water, never seeing the small blush that lit her face up. Naruto was embarrassed. But. It was not his fault. He let himself get so open. Well his eyes and mouth anyway. And the bottle of water he had in his hand was definitely making a puddle at his feet. And his face felt hot. Was he coming down with a fever? He doubted it. His reason was simple. The person coming down those steps just might have made time freeze with such a simple amount of movement. He would start the description with her hair. Her usually ponytail was abandoned and was wild and untamed, giving her a very exotic look. Her eyes were shining under the lowering sun as it reflected and showed mirth, humor and mischievously. But the fact that the white shirt she had on was his old shirt from when he was 12, even on her it was big, but somehow hugged to her curves and made her look so beautiful. Then were the shorts that stopped at her mid-upper thighs. These were also from when he was 12. They were a nice shade of green and in his pocket, as he never took it out, was a small gem he had found exploring the forest after a training session. Even in simplicity, Ino looked stunning. At that moment, the one thought that ran through his mind was, Sakurihu. They truly did not know what happened but it did. They had talked the night away. It was now 12 in the morning, luckily, neither had a mission in the morning. The two sat on Naruto's couch and talked some more about things, about Naruto learning his heritage and learning about family, what kind of jutsu was he learning, what kind of people had Ino had to interrogate, as she was now head of interrogations after being an apprentice under Ibiki. The conversation led into the night before Ino headed to her house. She knew her roommate would ask her questions if she got home any later. Naruto walked Ino home, telling her to keep all she had on and giving her the scroll that held all of her shopping items. As they walked through Konoha, the village was somewhat silent but still bustling with nightly routines and activities as people stumbled out the bar or were heading to the clubs. Ninja needed to have fun because they could die at any moment. Finally they reached Ino's door. The butterflies in both stomachs were not appreciated. Um thank you Naruto. Ino finally said as she turned towards him. Naruto smiled. Any time, we should do this again. Throwing pie in your face was truly the best prank I have done in years. Naruto said chuckling, to which Ino punched him on the arm playfully before she invaded his face again. And wrapped her arms around his neck. His breath hitched and his body automatically felt warm and. Accepted. We should do this again Naruto-kun. This is the most fun I've had in months. Ino practically purred into his ear playfully as she released him and headed to her door, pulling her keys out. Or would have had she not remembered that her keys were in her jeans which were in the scroll. But felt something poking out of the pocket. She decided to look at it later. A little embarrassed she knocked on the door and knowing that Sakura was up. Have a good night Ino. Naruto said with a smile as he retreated down the steps and made his way down and back to his mansion. Ino watched him go. It was always the same image. Him going into a fight, him going to avenge the dead of his fellow nin back against Kakuzu, him going off to face Sasuke. She was always watching him walk away, but now. After today, she wanted to walk with him. Be with him. She wanted Naruto. Naruto another day off just great. Naruto Uzumaki Namakas headed upstairs to change his outfit yet again, his small fox yipping in laughter at his attitude towards it, this was the fourth time in two weeks that he forgot. I should really put these things on calendar you know. Naruto muttered to himself as he came back downstairs wearing a navy blue v-neck shirt with grey cargo pants and the standard ninja shoes. Kayashi wastes no time jumping up and wrapping around his neck as Naruto decides to put his hit I ate on his arm this time. Alright. Now let's go get some ramen, Naruto said as Kayashi licked his face in agreement. Hokage Tower, Tsunade Senju. Adim Hokage of the Great Kanoha. The third and still alive member of the Sanin, powerful strength and incredibly sharp mind, and the best medic nin in the whole of Kanoha and possibly the elemental nations. Sake Gamrudo, Tsukim Grilber. Was asleep and mumbling incoherent sentences currently. Yes, yes she was. Leave a message after the. Slam. Tsunade lifted her head up and a rush as Shizun came in, hiding her giggle. Tsunade Sama, the ambassador for Kumo has arrived. Tsunade rubbed the cold from her eyes as she nodded in approval. Send her in. She replied. She then snapped her fingers and called the Anbu to get the best person she could think of for this mission. That me Naruto. Ichimaru Raymond Booth. Naruto smiled as he put his fourth Raymond bowl down on the counter and patted his belly before looking down at his foxy companion, also finish his bowl on the floor. Sure do pack them tight don't you Tuchi-san? Said Naruto as he chuckled. Only the best for my number one customer, Tucci stated with a laugh. Naruto smiled before a voice called him. The same voice from all those years. Dope. 
Naruto closed his eyes and paid no attention to the voice. When you start calling me by my given name, that's when I'll acknowledge your presence, Naruto said with a smirk as his best friend, Ichiha Sasuke sat down at the ramen stand and ordered a Maizo ramen. HN. I'll think about it. But until then, your name will stay the same dope, Sasuke replied as he picked up his chopsticks and began eating. Naruto sighed before smiling. So how was the mission? Gained another fangirl. Naruto said, causing the jonin besides him to sigh. After a few years of returning to Konoha, the girls just wouldn't leave him alone. While it wasn't on the same scale as Naruto, which he joked on him about it to no end, it still wasn't far off from the academy days. Shut up, he replied as he continued eating. So when is the wedding? Naruto jested with a straight face. After a few years of playing the scene, Sasuke finally smartened up and got together with Sakura. Naruto wasn't as crushed as he thought he would be, but felt happy that his friend at least told him of his decision. We aren't getting married yet you baka, Sasuke mumbled. Yeah, I know it's still funny watching her make you carry her bags, buy her products, wait for her at the salon, Naruto laughed as Sasuke tried to stab him with chopsticks. Sasuke stopped and smiled before looking downwards into his bowl. Who knew that rebuilding a clan would be so hard? Takes a lot of patience and politics. But I wouldn't trade it for anything. Naruto smiled and nodded in understanding before a small and unnoticeable twitch occurred on his left eyebrow, before he drank a glass of water with a small smirk. Ah, so how can I help you Anbu-san? Naruto said without looking up before the figure appeared in a blur. The Hokage has requested you in her office, the Anbu stated. Alright. Maybe I can go on a mission now. Naruto said with a smile before giving Sasuke a pound, placing his money on the counter and wishing the old man at the counter a goodbye as he scooped up Kayashi and used a shunshin to head to the office. Okage office, so how was your trip? Tsunade asked the ambassador. Pleasant. Cannot complain, no disturbances, just ready to do what needs to be done for my village, replied a female-toned ambassador, her voice clearly sounding a bit bored. Tsunade gave a knowing smirk as she wrapped her fingers together and put them under her chin. Are you sure you're doing this for your village or for yourself? Tsunade said with a smirk. The female said nothing, but the small blush was enough to answer her. She currently wished that something would come and save her from being asked any more questions about a real reason for being there. Luckily, it came. Suddenly both looked up into the window as wind flew in the office, whipping around paper and bringing a huge gust of wind before it suddenly stopped. Revealing Naruto in full ninja gear, flak jacket with a navy blue long sleeved turtleneck, black slacks, straps on both legs holding his special daggers and combat boots with his eyes closed, leaned on the window seal, elbows folded in his cool sage mode pose. You called Basama. Naruto asked in his smooth voice, wind blowing his hit IA-10 chopstick twitching in his mouth. Before losing all of his points as he was bashed into the ground from a growling Tsunade. You've sent all the just stamped papers to the floor Gaki. Tsunade growled as she grabbed Naruto by his flak jacket. Like you actually read those pieces of paper, I bet you just woke up from your daytime nap, Granny, Naruto growled in return as he was lifted in the air before being placed on his feet. What did I tell you about calling me that? Tsunade said as a knot formed on her face, and she bashed her forehead into Naruto's and growled. Not to call you that before your daily glass of milk as you get grumpy. Well I'm not scared grandma. Naruto shouted as he grasped his hands into a fist. Aki, I'm gonna kill you and revive you to kill you again. Bring it then. I don't mind hitting an elderly lady. Oh yeah, yeah, um. The argument was cut to a sudden halt as the two gazed at the blank face sweat dropping ambassador. Naruto blushed in embarrassment as Kayashi was laid in the Kinoichi's lap and was currently purring in contentment as the person stroked his fur. The awkwardness was stopped as Tsunade was in her desk in a flash and Naruto was still standing in his standard jonin outfit. But he remained staring at the familiar Kinoichi from Kumo. Pale blonde hair and a bowl cut style, but longer stopping around her shoulders with electric blue eyes. She had on a semi-tight grey shirt, confusing Naruto as he bust threatened to break through the shirt, short black skirt that stopped at mid-thighs, revealing her slender legs. She had a standard katana on her back with a leather strap and her kumo hit I-8 wrapped on her right bicep. Her blank look at Naruto reminded him of the looks Niji, Gara, and Sasuke all seemed to fancy. Naruto's face turned a bit red as he quickly turned away and addressed the Hokage. So what's the mission, Basama? Naruto said as he crossed his arms and got serious, if only to impress the cute Kinoichi. Oh how he was failing. Your mission is simple. You will be escorting Samui San here around the village and keep her entertained, said Tsunade with a small smirk as she knew Naruto would come dressed for a full mission. Naruto stared at her before looking at Samui, then back at Tsunade, then back at Samui before face palming. This is the last time I come dressed in mission garb. Naruto mumbled as he pulled his neck and instantly his ninja garb was torn off his body, revealing his outfit from before. The two Kanoichi looked at him in confusion at this change. Naruto stared in confusion as well. What? I get bored. 
So I got a nice seal that can put me in ninja gear on my wrist. Anyway, come on Samui-chan, let us paint the town orange. Naruto didn't give her a chance to respond as he grabbed her hand and pulled her into his arms, making her blush a little. With Kayashi already on his shoulder, he used a wind shunshun to mess up the paper some more, laughter fading with him. I am going to kill him Minato, your son will be joining you soon. Tsunade thought as she called some genin in to clean the mess up. Village. Naruto walked with a blank-faced Samui throughout the village, thinking of what he could do to get her to be entertained, while ignoring the looks the female population kept giving him and glaring at the male population for looking at the Kanoichi like a piece of meat. Alright, I got it. I'll take you on a tour of the village, I'm sure you didn't get the chance to look around seeing as how we kind of had an invasion, Naruto said with a smile. Sure thing Goldie, Samui mumbled in a bored tone as she stretched her back complaining about her back issues. Naruto looked at her with a squinted eye and open mouth, making her smirk. But that was all he was going to get from her. You don't laugh much do you? Said Naruto suddenly as he leaned into Samui's confused face. What is there to laugh about? If it is funny, I will laugh. Now back up, you are too close to my face, and I need space. Samui said as she slowly pushed Naruto away. Naruto smiled a bit, it has been a while since he met a female that didn't smile, not since Koyuki and Shion. Demon country, but you. Said person opened her eyes from her meditation before a small blush and smile appeared on her face. It is time for Naruto to help me, she said in a low voice. Spring country, I don't want to get married to any of these men. Koyuki said as she threw all the pictures of bachelors to the floor. The hundreds of pictures being spread on the floor. She finally turned to the advisor who looked at her in surprise. I need a strong man, a determined charming man who knows me and loves me for me, I need Koyuki looked at the picture on her desk, a small smile appeared on her face. Then she sneezed. Koyuki-sama. Koyuki lifted her face up and made her way out of the office. Call my carriage, I'm going to get Naruto Uzumaki. Konoha, achoo. Achoo. Yelled a voice. Tissue? Samui said with a look of small interest as she held it up. Naruto looked at the tissue before giving her an embarrassed grin and taking it. Thanks. He said as he wiped his nose and put it in his pocket before smiling at her in a very suggestive manner. I know what I'm going to do for you, Naruto said as he stopped walking. Oh. And what is that? Said Samui in a serious tone, eyebrows raised in curiosity. Simple. I'm going to make you laugh. Said Naruto as he walked on. Samui looked at him before shaking her head. Good luck. She whispered as she followed along. I've actually got a lot of good luck. You should ask Basama, said Naruto as he was now behind her. She had no chance to ask how he got behind her or how he hurt her as she felt her hand being grabbed again and led to a place she had no idea. Alright Samui-chan, let's go have some fun. Naruto said as he ran off. Samui looking at him for a few minutes before smirking again. Maybe just maybe. It won't be so bad. Hours later, Samui finally cracked. She finally laughed. But Naruto. Naruto was not laughing with her. He had taken her everywhere. The training grounds where he cracked jokes about Team 7, receiving blank faces, the mall where he met Rock Lee and Guy, and saved Samui from the horrid jutsu of them hugging, the shopping districts, where he cracked jokes about his old outfits, the arcade, where he beat her in every game, the academy, where he told her of his class clown tendencies, producing a Lola's Merc, then went to Ichimaru's for lunch, trying to get her to laugh by playing around with his food, and now they were back at his house, and all it took for her to laugh was for him to slip on a banana and crash down a flight of stairs. This is so not funny. Can you at least help me up so I can take you to the final place for the day before my mission ends? Naruto said with a groan. This fall was so not cool. Kayashi just loved to leave fruits on the floor at the most inopportune times of life. At least she laughed. Sure, Samui said as she extended her hand. Then pulled it back, causing him to crash onto the floor again. Naruto grumbled as she walked past him. Or she would have if he had not grabbed her ankle and brought her crashing to the floor. Ha. Now who's laughing now? He replied as he got up and then in turn got leg tripped. Samui smiled as she crawled over towards him and bashed his face to the ground. But the floor brings out your eyes, she said in a joking tone. Naruto looked up in shock. You just told a joke. Naruto said with a raised eyebrow. Yes. I did, I can be fun if I want to, I just like to make people work for it, replied Samui as she attempted to get up. Naruto sprang into action as he tackled her down and began wrestling with her. Well, looks like I'll have to work some more, Naruto said with a smile. The two began wrestling before Naruto touched her side, causing her to laugh. Naruto stopped and a cruel smirk appeared. Piccolish are we? Naruto said as he began moving his fingers in the air. Samui's eyes widened before Naruto plunged his fingers into her sides, causing her to burst into loud laughter. She flipped it on him and the two began laughing some more before Naruto and Samui stopped with Samui on her back and Naruto on top of her. Told you I can get you to laugh, Naruto said as he gazed in her blue eyes. 
I suppose you were right, Samui said with a smirk. The room turned silent as the other looked deep into the other's eyes, literally sparks flew from the amount of peering the two were doing. Unconsciously, one began to lean into the other, not knowing what was about to happen, but not willing to stop it. The lips felt dry yet urgent to connect, and the passion that began to emerge from simply looking at one another was unbearable. But the loud yip broke the chemistry that was formulating between the two, and just like that the moment was over. It was then that they noticed the position they were in, and the two literally flew off of one another. You uh, let's go. I want to take you to one more place, Naruto said quickly as he grabbed a nice trench coat and leader outside, not making eye contact. Samui looked at him with a thoughtful expression. Very respectful, surprising considering who his sensei was. Fun, but knows how to be serious, strong, determined. Maybe he can be the one Samui thought as she was led outside. The two walked in silence, as she knew if she asked where they were going that he would not answer. Eventually the two came up a flight of stairs. After some climbing, Naruto walked her to a cliff before Samui caught sight of the most amazing view. This is the top of the cage's monument. I used to come up here and watch the view and still do from time to time. This is the best part of the village. Sitting here on my father's head and watching the village. It's like I'm letting him know that I'm watching and protecting Kanoha for him you know. Naruto said as he sat down and patted for her to do the same. As she sat down, the two made small talk as she told him about Kumo, and he in return talked to her about Kanoha. Eventually he got her to actually break into a natural genuine smile. It was better than the view of the village. You should really smile more often. Naruto whispered as he removed his coat and wrapped it around her before resting his elbows on his knees, missing her small blush. Who would have thought he'd be such a gentleman? Naruto gazed at the village with a relaxed expression. This whole day was pretty fun he had to say. Learned a lot about Samui and really wanted to hang out with her, let alone see her again. Eventually Naruto smiled and extended his hand. Let's get you to where you're staying for the night. I'm sure you're exhausted from all the walking. Naruto said as he stared at her eyes. Samui looked at his hands before slowly placing her hands in his, and her face went from impassive to brief shock as he used his strength and tossed her onto his back before catching her thighs and turning towards the cliff. Hold on tight was the only warning she got before he jumped off of the faces, surprising Samui as he took her on a peaceful ride throughout the village. Eventually and sadly, in Samui's opinion, they reached the inn she was staying, and Naruto put her down in front of her door. I hope you enjoyed the tour of Konoha. Maybe we could hang out again you know. Naruto said as he scratched the back of his head. Samui said nothing before slowly walking up to him. Naruto began to get nervous as most of the times, the females he knew would approach him to hit him. So he began to panic. I I mean, only if you want to I mean, I don't want to uh. He was silenced by a chaste kiss to his whisker cheeks, causing his eyes to widen and him to flush. Slowly touching his cheeks, he turned to see her smiling at him with her hands clasped in front of her. Thank you for the trip around the village Naruto-kun. And for making this decision so much easier I didn't even know it, but you are the one the one I've come to Kanoha for. Naruto smiled, not having a clue about her thoughts before watching her walk towards the inn. Any time? Naruto replied as he turned away and walked away silent, hands in his pocket and eyes towards the moon. Samui looked at him before remembering his trench coat was still wrapped around her. She decided to keep it so she'd have another excuse to see him. Besides, she'd be here for the next year so she'd have many opportunities. Naruto smiled as he lay in his bed staring at the ceiling with Kayashi curled up on his stomach. Best mission ever. The mission was a failure. What was supposed to be a simple escort mission became an ambush from some weird Odo nins who should have been killed a long time ago. Apparently, this group was the last batch of nins still alive after that war. So when 60 nins show up just to kill three Kanoha shinobi and one shinobi, after making their way back to Kanoha from their mission, something was obviously wrong. Anko Mitarashi for once was afraid. The last time she had been afraid was when she was in the middle of the mob that was about to kill her, when she was defenseless and weak. She refused from then on to show weakness. But now, with the remaining 50 or more against just her as the other three nins with her gave their lives to get her away from them, her left arm was dislocated, kunai and shuriken all over her body, it looked inevitable. She was going to die. She would die without her dango, she would die without getting the stupid seal off of her neck, she would die still being feared by Kanoha, she would die single, with no man to care for her, no man to love her, nobody to hold her in these last seconds. It was over. Hiroshin no Jutsu, she was right, it was over. Her eyes snapped open to find herself in an empty field and in the arms of a blonde-haired shinobi. But the fourth was dead so this could only be. Are you okay Snake-san? Said a voice in a serious tone. Namak is Yuzumaki Naruto. The strongest jounin out of the rookie nine who also started off as the dead last of the group. Son of Minato Namakas, fourth Hokage, godson of Jureya the Toad Sanin, trained by him and Kakashi Haddock, son of the White Fang. His look was so stoical that didn't look right on him. But. 
that she could feel the concern in his voice. What happened? Was Anko's simple response as she gazed into his cerulean orbs that were fixed on her. Then a smile appeared. Oh that's easy, I was patrolling this area seeing as how we have taken over rice country when I came across three dead Kanohinin and eight dead Odonins with two on the brink of death. I interrogated one and then sent both Kanoichi to Kanoha for treatment and further interrogation. Then I found you curled up in a ball with about 40 nin about to kill you. So I did my awesome jutsu and killed or disabled them, then went to Kanoha to ask for reinforcements, then came back and grabbed you, and now we are outside of Kanoha about half of a mile. You're very injured so I had to stop here, otherwise you'll possibly die with the speed I was going and the amount of blood you're currently dripping. It's pretty late so we should prepare firewood Anko-san, don't you agree? Said Naruto all in one breathe. Anko was floored. She wouldn't let this opportunity go to waste. She was alive, she had a chance to eat Dango, to shower again, to live again. 2. Anko gazed into his cerulean eyes again and her eyes watered. The last time she cried was in the arms of the Sandame Hokage when he gave her a chance to be a ninja again. When she threw him to the floor and bawled in his jown and flak jacket and felt him rubbing her back and telling her it was okay she knew two things. She was crying again and she wanted to be held by him. When Anko came to, she found herself warm and comfortable. She looked around to find herself underneath a warm knapsack in a tent with the sound of burning wood. I see you're awake I hear. How is everything? Said a voice that Anko knew was Naruto. Better. Was her simple reply as she slowly crawled out her tent. Or tried to. Pain shook through her body as she gasped in shock. In two seconds she felt strong arms hold her shoulders. You're in a lot of pain right now Anko-san. Moving on your own is not possible right now. Let me help you. Naruto lifted Anko into his arms bridal style and set her down next to a tree before sitting on his log, not seeing the small blush that appeared on her face. When was the last time someone did that for me? She asked herself. So what happened? Naruto asked after passing her ration bar that was. Raymond flavored. Anko inwardly shrugged as she ate the ration and told her the story of what happened with the escort mission and the ambush. Naruto nodded in contemplation. We'll be heading to Kanoha in the morning. I'll take you to the hospital where they will fully heal you and then I'll take you to the Hokage's office so you can report the mission. But since you're awake, I was looking at that seal Naruto raised his eyebrow a bit when he seen her hand unconsciously move towards her neck. I feel nothing. I took it off. I don't know how long you had that on, but it couldn't have been for a good cause. It's a good thing we have the originator of that seal in Kanoha, and I happen to have the chemicals needed to release the seal on you, but your seal is gone. Naruto said as he looked into the sky with his hands behind his head, leaning on the tree. Anko was scared. This couldn't be happening. This had to be a dream. A. Hi. Nothing changed. Could it be? That the man she was looking for to care for her, protect her, be there for her was right here. Was Naruto? Anko slowly tried to crawl over to him as he continued to peer into the sky with his eyes opened. She needed to do this. Naruto was busy looking into the stars trying to figure out what was going on with his life. First Akatsuki was finished. Sasuke was still alive and was made back into a Kanoha shinobi, a jounin at that, he was instated as the Namika's clan heir, and then things took a turn for the worst when. Naruto felt a hand grasp his flak jacket. His eyes immediately locked onto Anko, who looked to be straining herself crawling towards him. He froze. He had never seen such a look in her eyes. He had seen mirth, he had seen fear when those nin were about to end her life, she had seen amusement when she thrown that kunai at him back in the chunin exam, but this look was unexplainable. So he did nothing when she grasped his jacket and pulled herself up to his face and hugged him, continuously thanking him. When she released him she laid her head on his chest and whispered for him to hold her. He did. For once in her life Anko felt home. Naruto felt differently. He felt complete. We are close to home Anko-san. Naruto whispered as she nodded on his back. The two awoke in the morning in each other's arms, somewhat awkwardly, they let go and cleaned up the campsite before Naruto told her to get on his back and they would travel back to Kanoha. The whole trip the two just talked, Naruto could see her old self coming back as she mercilessly whispered about how she would feed him to her snakes if he uttered a word to anyone about what happened in the forest. Naruto quickly agreed. As they came up to the gates, laughing and talking excitably like old friends, the guards Katetsu and Izumo had to wonder what happened to Anko as she would always come back barely scratched and fingering a kunai. Not on the back of a shinobi looking quite bruised and hurt. The main question, as the two passed by them without a word, was, where is her curse seal? Izumo asked Katetsu. Katetsu laughed as he watches Anko try to choke Naruto from afar. Naruto is just like his father. He's a seal master. So I'm thinking he removed it. He replied, looking towards the fourth Hokage. Izumo was silent before he chuckled. That makes sense. I'll kill you. I'd like to see you try Kabra-chan. Shikamaru sighed. There the two went again. 
Ever since Naruto brought Anko to the Hokage and Tsunade ordered that she was to heal under the watch of Naruto to see if any negative reaction would occur from the removal of the seal, and until she was back to full health, the two would be screaming at one another and then act like nothing happened in seconds. This was only the second day. Troublesome you two sound like a married couple. Shikamaru said, sitting on the couch as he watched the two butting heads and growling at one another. Like I would want to marry him her, they simultaneously screamed before noticing the other say the same thing. What you say? Stop saying what I'm saying. You're doing it again. The two continued saying what the other was saying at the same time. Shikamaru just wanted to hang with Naruto and play shogi, maybe stare at the clouds, things like that. Now, he just wanted to solve this issue and go back to relaxing. Look it's obvious both of your prides won't allow you to admit that you enjoy one another's company being the way things usually occurred when you trust others, seeing as how one of your senseis defected and abandoned you and another's best friend tried to kill him. But I am pretty sure you both know how to trust others and not be like the people that hurt you, so just get over it and admit you want to be in the other's life. You two are too strong to be acting so foolish. Get over it. Anyway, I am going home. By the way. Shikamaru moved one piece to finish the game and left, lighting his cigarette before opening the game and blowing it. Techmate spelled out the smoke. I need to learn how to do that. Naruto mused to himself before sighing. He's right. Naruto said as he sat down next to Anko. I don't mind having you as a friend. I think it would be a good friendship seeing our past has some similarities. Naruto said as he averted making eye contact with her. Anko was silent before breathing in and out slowly before grasping his chin and looking at him. Well, first, friends look one another in the eye instead of blushing and looking away. She said with a smile as Naruto turned red in embarrassment. Sorry. No problem. Look, I am willing to be your friend as well it's just a lot to take in right now, so forgive me if I'm acting out, no one has ever done so much for me for no reason, and the last person that did. Naruto knew what she was going to say and shook his head in disagreement. I will never abandon you. Anko could see the determined look in his eyes and knew he wouldn't. Good. Now hold me again. Anko said as she crawled into his laps. Do friends do this? Hold one another? Naruto asked in a low voice. It had been years that he longed to be held. He never made a big deal about it, but when she wrapped her arms around him, he felt all those years of longing coming back full force. Yes they do. Anko whispered as she soon fell asleep. Naruto smiled before nodding off again, Kayashi soon joining them and falling asleep as well. The figure came into the gates of Konoha very late at night next to another figure. Returning from training trip. Asked the late night ninja as he instantly knew who it was that entered the gate. Yes I'll be making my way home now. Said a female voice as her sensei nodded and shunchened away into small papers. The female figure headed off to her home all the while holding onto a three-pronged kunai. Naruto-kun the birds chirped as a new day arose over Namika's Naruto as he awoke on the couch with Midarashi Anko on his chest still awake. Not that he minded, who wouldn't want to awake to someone so beautiful. Naruto stared at the ceiling and thought about all that had occurred in the past few weeks. First was the encounter with Ino, then it was taking Samui on a tour of the village, and finally Anko who now lived with him until she recovered fully from her injuries. Naruto sighed. What is next? Then the doorbell rang. Naruto created a clone by the door and swapped places with it. When he opened the door, an Anbu was awaiting for him. Naruto blinked before sighing. Give me five minutes, I'll be at the tower. The Anbu nodded before disappearing. Naruto got showered, brushed and dressed before deciding not to go dressed for a mission. The Anbu didn't say to anyway. Dressing in a plain t-shirt with jeans and some combat boots, Naruto headed out for the tower, Kayashi wrapped around his neck. Hokage Tower, Tsunade was smiling, she finally had her revenge on the brat. Naruto would finally get what he deserved for that paper incident, and then some. It was in the form of the regal figure awaiting the person coming and right about. The door opened and in came Naruto with his eyes closed and his hands holding his fox pet. What is it you want Bachan? Naruto froze on the spot once he saw just who was in the office. Shai Xian chan whispered Naruto, shock apparent on his face. He hadn't seen her in years. And she looked stunning. She had on a simple white dress that went down to her ankles with red, yellow and blue flowers at the bottom. In her hand looked to be a scroll and by her feet was an arrangement of suitcases and the like. Naruto smiled finally and opened his arms as she ran into his arms, blushing as he picked her up and spun her around. How have you been? Asked Naruto. He couldn't wait to share his stories and hear her stories in return. I can wait until later on, said Tsunade as she cut him off and prepared for the trap. Xian is on vacation for the time being, as she is taking a leave for personal reasons. As such, she requested stay in your residence, seeing as how she knows you and you have much space in your complex, said Tsunade. Knowing he wouldn't remember about Anko staying or that he didn't know about the coming person either. Ah, Minato, Kishina, Jiraiya, Saratobi, I hope you're watching. 
of course she can stay with me, said Naruto with a grin, hand still holding on to Xiang, who was still blushing, but had a content look on her face. A few shadow clones appeared see less and began picking up the bags. So, how would you like to take a walk around the village before we go to the house? We could talk then, said Naruto. I, I would like that, Xian said with a smile. Great. Then we're off. See you later, Bachan. Said Naruto as he left the room with a still red in the face Xian. I hope you haven't forgotten what I asked you for, Naruto-kun. Four hours later, Naruto and Xian talked throughout the day into the afternoon about what had occurred for the both of them since the mission in Demon Country. Every time the conversation would get close to whether or not Xian had a relationship, she would change the conversation and sputter. Suddenly, as they passed by a restaurant, Xian's stomach growled kind of loud. Hungry are ya? Said Naruto with a grin, chuckling at her embarrassed blush. Hum, I'll take you to my favorite spot to eat. Said Naruto with a smile as he led her to Ichiraku's Raymond shop. Ichiraku's Raymond shop, hey old man. Three bowls of miso soup and some beef for Xian for starters, yelled Naruto as he brought the blinds to the side and sat down, patting his seat next to him for Xian to sit down. Oh, and who is this? Girlfriend of yours. Asked Uchi as he brought the steaming bowl down in front of Naruto and Xian. Naruto blushed a bit and scratched the back of his head. He he as if someone as beautiful as Xian Haim would want to go out with me, said Naruto with a chuckle. Xian smiled. You never know Naruto I just might take you up on that offer of being your girlfriend, Xian laughed as Naruto choked on his ramen in shock. Duchi chuckled as he walked away to let Naruto talk his way out of that situation. Naruto sighed in delight before suddenly looking outside and smiling. I want to show you something, said Naruto suddenly as he put a wad of bills on the table for the ramen. Hum, let's go. Naruto said extended his hand. Xian was silently wondering what was he up to before finally grabbing his hand. Xian blushed suddenly as he brought her up to his chest and wrapped his arms around her waist. Does he know? Is he ready to help me? Were her thoughts at the moment. She was interrupted as his baritone voice rung in her ear. Hold tight. In a swirl of leaves they were gone from the restaurant. Alley of the end. As Xian opened her eyes, a gasp of surprise, awe and shock occurred. The only description she could give as to where she was right now was breathtaking. Naruto landed on top of the first Hokage statue, giving them a view of the waterfalls and countless trees and wildlife that littered over the area. This is the place where I and Sasuke fought Naruto said suddenly, eyes distant and looking at the exact area they talked and fought at. We came here at least twice to fight. The second time was when I won and carried him back to Konoha. Naruto said as he finally let go of Xian, much to her disappointment, and sat down at the edge of the first's head. It's funny. Learning how history repeats itself. I am of Senju blood, and Sasuke was of Ichiha blood. We fought two times and changed the landscape to what it is now. This has now become our training ground. We fight here, we talk here, and we plan here. This is the best area in all of Fire Country to me. Because it means the most to me, said Naruto. Xian slowly walked towards him before sitting down behind him and draping her arms around him. Why would you share this area with me? Said Xian after a few moments of feeling the embrace and becoming one with him. Naruto was silent for a few minutes, thinking about how to reply. I don't know it just felt like the right thing to do. You know. Said Naruto with a sheepish grin. Xian said nothing before moving to sit in front of him. Slowly she tilted his chin up and looked him straight in the eyes. I do know Naruto. Then she kissed him. It felt like the right thing. The both of them. Hum, let's take you to where I stay, it's getting late and you look a bit tired, said Naruto as he scooped her up and jumped off into the trees to head back to Konoha by the scenic route. Xian closed her eyes and heard nothing but the melody of his heart and hers resonate. He'll be a good father. He's so thoughtful, strong and he cares I knew he would be the one I need to tell him what I meant back then, but when? How? Namika's residence, Enko? I'm home yelled Naruto as he came into the house, Xian following behind him. When she heard him call out a woman's name, she thought maybe it was a maid or his cousin. When said person entered the room however, Xian knew that this was not anyone related to him. Anko hobbled up to the two, Kayashi wrapped around her neck before seeing the new arrivals and rushing over to be petted by Xian, who soon obliged. Ah, good to see you're awake still. Anko, this is Xian, priestess of. Ex-priestess for the moment Naruto-kun. I'm on vacation, corrected Xian as she stared down Anko with a bit of fear. Wonder. Naruto couldn't tell. Anko just grinned. Nice to meet you, Anko said as she bowed towards her before jumping into Naruto's arms. Now I believe you owe me a massage no Naruto-kun. Heard Anko as she poked him with each syllable to his name. Naruto pouted. Hi and let me show Xian her room first and then I'll meet you there, said Naruto, not knowing what Anko was really doing or feeling the killer intent coming from Xian. Thanks Naruto-kun, you're such a good man. One day you'll make the perfect husband, treating me like this, I should just keep you all to myself and be your wife, said Anko, in a tone Naruto couldn't tell if she was serious or not. So he laughed nervously. 
Haha, <laughs> I try my best Anko-chan, said a red-faced Naruto as he quickly put her down and grabbed Xion's hand, dragging her upstairs, he put his head down to cover his flush. I wouldn't mind being married to Anko-chan either. Midnight, Naruto lay down on his bed staring at the ceiling. Things were moving too fast for him right now if he were to think about it, what was it with all of these females suddenly appearing and acting so different towards him? Not that he didn't think they were all beautiful in their own way, it was just very convenient for them to suddenly appear just when he learned that. The tap on the window interrupted his thought. Naruto looked to his window to see a cloaked figure at the door. Thinking it was Anbu, Naruto got up and walked towards it. He opened the door, only to shake in shock and surprise. He was not prepared for what was on the other side. But the other side was prepared for him. The whip wrapped around his neck and pulled him out of his house Kayashi padded over and pushed the door closed. Yipping as it went back to sleep on the bed. Outside, Naruto flew through the air from the window for what felt like minutes before crashing into a tree before a poof went off, signifying it was merely a clone. The cloaked figure stood there for a minute before disappearing in a swirl of water. Knowing he would follow. When the figure arrived at an empty field, she threw the kunai to the other side and awaited his arrival. In a flash, Naruto appeared, gown and outfit on and daggers in hand held in a reverse grip in front of his face. If it's a fight you want, it's a fight you got, Naruto said with a grin. Wasting little time, Naruto ran over to the figure in a burst of speed, sending the ground up in the air with each step. He then jumped high in the air and came down in a downward slash with both hands, to which the figure pulled out two kunai and blocked his assault, inwardly shocked as her kunai cracked with one hit. The figure pushed him and dropped her kunai before being in his face in two seconds. Naruto was confused at his speed. Then a palm thrust hit him dead in his chest. Sending him flying into a tree. Before he could recover, the figure was again in front of him. The figure then grabbed his head. And kissed him. Naruto fell into a daze as the person's lip touched his and melted in her embrace. Then the figure spoke. Find me Naruto-kun. Then she disappeared. Naruto said nothing at all. His eyes were wide opened and his mouth was as well. He stayed in the same spot before standing up slowly and walking back home. Retrieving his throne kunai, he looked at it for a few seconds before smiling. Do can play that game Hinata-chan. Tsunade was sitting on her couch sipping on sake with a relaxed look on her face. The day wasn't that bad. Besides personally handing out missions and signing thousands of paperwork, it was nice to finally settle down for a bit. Her thoughts were on Naruto and possibly giving him the title of Hokage. He had done everything needed. But she decided he needed to get his priorities straight in terms of settling down. Speaking of such a thing, shouldn't he be here by now to discuss what happened? The sound of the door opening was heard before, just as she guessed, came in Yuzumaki Naruto with a thoughtful and confused face. Achan. Tsunade nodded and patted the seat next to her. Sit down. It took you long enough to come to me, said Tsunade. She then handed him some sake and told him to explain what he needed help with. Naruto told her everything. From the hug from Ino, to the kisses from the other girls, to the feeling of waking up with Anko sleeping next to him, and finally finishing with Hinata's sudden appearance. Tsunade was silent before smirking. What is there to be confused about? Marry them all. Tsunade chuckled as she watched Naruto spit out his sake while coughing out words she couldn't understand. Ach and this isn't a joke, I'm dealing with emotions here, how do I get through with this? What if they ask me to decide between them? Asked Naruto as he stared at his cup. She sighed before getting serious. Naruto you're a grown man now you can only get older. Time is short I think, if you get to know them furthermore, you'll find the one for you. Hang out with them equally, take them out on dates, that way, you can figure out which one strikes your fancy, said Tsunade as she patted his head like a mother would a child. Naruto smiled before putting the sake down and leaning onto Tsunade's lap as she ran her fingers through her head. This became a normal routine after a while, Naruto would drop by and Tsunade would answer any question he had. Only when they were in the company of one another would they act like a real family. After a while Naruto spoke again. So, I'm thinking of a way to properly greet Hinata seeing as she really did surprise me tonight, said Naruto as he spoke in low tones, feeling comforted by his adopted grandmother. Do you now? Mind sharing how you plan on doing that? Said Tsunade with a smirk. Throughout the night Naruto gave some ideas and Tsunade either approved or would slap him on the head for coming up with such a foolish idea. Up until the sunrise the two talked and relaxed. Something ninja don't do often but family did whenever they got the chance to. Hinata woke up to smell the sweetest smell in her entire life. It smelled like cinnamon rolls. Hinata snuggled into her bed before realizing one thing. She didn't eat cinnamon buns, hadn't eaten it in a year ever since she left for her special training program with Conan Sensei. She suddenly sprung out of bed to find an assortment of cinnamon rolls displayed over her dresser in a box with a note on it. As she picked up the note, she suddenly smiled. Dear Hinata, by picking up this picture, you have begun the HINATA challenge. The trials you will endure involve your personality and all the special attributes that make you who you are. 
Taking one bite of these cinnamon rolls will make your first letter equals heavenly. If you would channel chakra into the bottom of this note, you will be led to the next challenge and note. Enjoy the sweets first, they're handmade. Sincerely, the sage. Anada smiled sweetly as she read the last line before deciding to eat her breakfast. Taking up a orange frosted roll, she took one bite and felt like she was on cloud nine. These were amazing. Faster than Naruto eaten Raymond, the entire roll was finished before Hinata decided to save the rest for later. Getting ready to leave for her hunt for the next clue, she channeled Chakra into the note and giggled softly at the next clue before leaving the Hyuga mansion to do the next challenge. Hanoha Stadium, Hinata walked to the front doors to see a weird seal on the entrance. Not recognizing it, she deducted that it was something not for regular eyes. As she put her by Akigan on, she read the seal before walking up to it and putting Chakra through the seal. The doors opened with a click, and Hinata opened the door to find 100 smiling Naruto's in different outfits, styles and sizes. Hinata marveled at the sight and if she was herself four years ago, would have fainted already. But after confessing her love to him, this was just a walk in the park. After thinking about what he wished for her to do, she nodded as she began dispelling each clone that did not look like the real him, including a Naruto dressed in Jiraiya's garb and a red-haired Naruto, she chuckled at that, and an extremely shy-looking Naruto she sweat dropped at that, finally she arrived at the final two Naruto's dressed in Hokage garbs. After staring at them with her Byakugan she finally noticed the one difference. One had no cute whisker marks. Dispelling that one, the final Naruto smiled. You have completed the challenge, here is your next clue and scroll. Handing the girl the scroll, the clone saluted before dispelling himself. Hinata opened it up. Congratulations. You have completed the intelligence challenge. I equals intelligent. Your knowledge was always top notch in my book. You are the smartest woman I know. Now, for your next challenge, follow the tale. The sage, Hinata looked around before seeing a waving tail at the end of the entrance, walking towards it, she watched as the tail waved before walking off. Hinata followed at a slow pace before speeding up as the tail started turning corners faster. After running through the bathhouses, Hokage Monument and past her own home, she found the tail waving inside of Ichiraku's. Hinata walked in to find Yipping Kayashi licking Raymond with AM next to him. Ah. Hinata-san, welcome back, nah I mean, the sage wanted me to give this to you, giggling, AM handed Naruto a note and a leash that was tied to Kayashi. Hinata the next letter that makes your name is N Nerder. Your usage of healing ointments and carefulness with nourishing plant life proves to me that you care for all things in a very delicate manner. As such, I put my trust in you by leaving you to take care of Kayashi here. Nourish him, train him, feed him, teach him because this quality is one I have learned how to do from you, so why not let the teacher show the student how it's done. The sage, Anada smiled before taking Kayashi for a walk after he finished his ramen. Academy, after taking Kayashi back to the manor, letting Hinabi rub its belly, feeding him some fine cuisine and giving him a bath, Hinata let Kayashi lead her to the academy and into the classroom of Aruka. Hinata-san. Right on time, I've been given this note to give to you, said Aruka with a knowing smile as he handed her the next clue. Hinata, your next challenge is to be aspiring. How do you do that you ask? Simple, everyone wants to be like their sensei. In some aspects anyway as such, your challenge is to teach the Kanoichi how to be the best that they can be, we wouldn't want another Sakurai no accident now would we? The sage. Hinata chuckled as she awaited her next assignment. The room filled with the students returning form playing outside. As they filled in their seats, many of the young students either looked at the Hyuga with a fox, or some just ran up and petted the fox, before Iruka got the classroom to finally settle down. Alright class, today we are in for a special treat, the Kinoichi will be getting a lesson from the next heir to the Hyuga clan herself, said Iruka, the females gasping in awe and amazement. Everyone knew of the valiant effort Hinata had put up to defend Naruto and Kanoha during the pain invasion. But that being said, the boys will be going outside to get some lecturing about the history of Kanoha today, said Aruka, the males of the class groaning, some wanting to hear the discussion. Slowly but surely, the class was left with the young women and Hinata who breathed in and out to calm herself down. Well, Hinata closed her eyes as she remembered her times with her team and the missions and friendship to family feeling. It requires a lot of important bonding with your teammates, in addition to being strong enough to defend both yourself and your teammate. To be a Kanoichi of Kanoha means that you fight not only for your village, but you're out there facing the evils of the world you find that you will fight your hardest protecting whatever you held dear to you. If you hold Kanoha dear to you, you'll fight for Kanoha, if you hold your teammates dear, you'll fight your hardest. Did you mean it when you said you love me? I did and if I had to do it again, I would. Because it's true. Hinata. I have to go Naruto I need to be stronger don't wait for me, as long as you're happy Naruto come that's all that matters. Hinata I. But bye Naruto come my love. If you love something, you'll die for it being a kinoichi to me meaning you will fight for what you believe for what you love with determination. Never give up that has become my nindo. 
My ninja code and as a Kanoichi of Kanoha Hinata finally opened her eyes to see the room in awe and silent. Eyes filled with admiration. Just like her eyes whenever she looked at Naruto. I will do my best to be the strongest I can be in order to make sure nothing happens to Kanoha, Hinata finished. In the corner of her eye, she had seen a yellow flash just leave the area. She smiled. Any questions? After answering all the questions and hopefully giving the class a new perspective on being a ninja, Hinata got a note from one of the students who said it was just laying there on the table with her name on it. Reading the note, she made her way to the sacred battleground for her next challenge. Sacred Battleground, this area was the part of Kanoha that was not fixed, but left to pay homage to all the ninja that fought for Kanoha, Naruto in particular. In the middle of the huge field was another stone showing the ninjas that died fighting off pain, and a huge statue with Naruto standing on top of the toads he came in with. Ayashi laid down by the statue so that Hinata can face the challenge on her own. In the middle of the field was Naruto with a smile on his face. Are you ready for the next challenge Hinata-chan? He asked. As she nodded, Naruto flashed through hand seals. In Jutsu. Infinite Darkness Jutsu. All light left the area, and Hinata was unable to see a thing, all she heard was a voice. That sounded just like pain. Do you fear the unknown? He asked. Do you fear what you cannot see? How do you expect to live without knowing what tomorrow may bring? Why do you try? Who do you live for? Another voice spoke, then another, until six voices began asking questions in rapid succession, before they all spoke as one. What is love? They repeated this question. Hinata knew they wanted an answer she breathed in before answering. Love is to be fearless it is to jump into the unknown, knowing you could die fighting it is throwing away all nervousness and reason to do what's right. It's showing you care you become stronger when you love someone. What do you love? Hinata smiled. I love those who never give up who continue to fight through anything. Those who smile in the face of danger I love my family I love my teammates I love my sensei I love Konoha and. Hinata giggled as she realized what T stood for. The truth is I've loved Naruto since we were younger always have always will. The voice was silent before the darkness faded away. You pass. The area cleared away to reveal a note hanging on the Naruto statue. Hinata picked it up and sighed in relief. She had to go change her clothing for this challenge. Hinoha Park 8 o'clock p.m. Hinata arrived at the gate of the park to find it closed. She found the gate open once she got within six inches of it. Hinata had changed her outfit into a purple dress that went to her mid-thigh. She came with some of the rolls she had gotten this morning, as well as some more food that she had cooked herself. When she got into the middle of the park, she gasped. There were candles set up in a circle with a table in the middle. On it was two cups and two plates with a lavender tablecloth underneath. Sitting to the left of the table was Kayashi. But it was the man standing behind her suddenly that had her attention. Strong arms wrapped around her and a deep voice whispered in her ear. Welcome back Hinata-chan. Hinata fell into his arms and felt comfort. Naruto released her after a few minutes and guided her by hand to the table where she sat down. The two made small talk before Hinata sighed and smiled at Naruto. What is the real reason for all of this Naruto-kun? She asked suddenly. Naruto too sighed, it took her long enough to ask. Because I remember what you told me before fighting pain Naruto said. Hinata was silent, but if one were to look, you would see that her palm became sweaty and her hand was shaking. She had tried to forget about that confession, as such, she'd taken to trying to avoid being alone with Naruto whenever he was around, no matter how much he would try to talk to her, she would disappear. When the apprentice training trip with Conan came along, Hinata jumped at the opportunity to get away from Naruto so that things can calm down, and she would come back confident and ready to talk to Naruto about what she said to him all that time ago. But, as she peered into his blue eyes, she felt her years of training slowly falling apart she was scared she was worried what would he say. Why did he affect her so? What was it about him that made her so nervous and scared? She jumped a bit as she felt her hand being grabbed by Naruto. I understand now why you were acting the way you were Hinata, Naruto said with a comforting smile. Hinata remained staring at him, her eyes unblinking and hanging on to every word. You were afraid of what I would say, that I would deny your love, and that hurt you more than anything else on earth, so you figured, if you could avoid me you wouldn't have to hear it you could hold on to your proclamation without hearing my response Naruto slowly rose out of his seat with his hand in Hinata's hand. The quick excuses to leave whenever I came into a room, the constant missions you would go on whenever I was on a mission myself, the training trip for two years in AIM do you think I didn't notice you were avoiding me? Naruto said, his eyes looking a bit hurt but also determined. Hinata felt a part of her die she didn't mean to hurt Naruto in any way, shape or form. She didn't know that avoiding him like that was hurting him how could she have been so stupid? Naruto suddenly smiled. Do you know what the last letter stands for Hinata? He said softly, slowly pulling her out of her seat. Hinata shook her head slowly, a bit surprised at the gesture of him wrapping his arms around her waist. Let me show you. In a flash of light, the two were gone. Undisclosed location. When Naruto landed, Hinata held onto his shirt to stop her dizzy feeling. 
Heh, sorry about that, I forgot people aren't used to moving so fast Naruto said, rubbing his head. I it's okay Hinata whispered, as she looked around to where she was, she gasped. This was the first time Hinata ever talked to Naruto the day he went off to fight at the Chunin exams. Except there was a dazzling array of floating candles and was that a violin. Amazing Hinata whispered. Naruto chuckled. How do you know the last letter? Naruto said softly before leading her into the middle. There he held her right hand and bowed. May I have this dance? Hinata nodded and giggled at his antics. As they danced under the moonlight with the sound of violins, Naruto finished his thoughts and finally spoke. Hinata this is the place where I told you I thought you were weird but also the place where I told you I like people like you it's taken me a couple years, but I now realize the truth Naruto moved his head to look her directly in her eyes. I've spent these past two years searching within myself for the answer and right response to your declaration, and it's simple Naruto smiled. I've come to love you Hinata I've missed you in my life for the past two years this hunt was done just for you, because I've been saving the moment to do so for these past two years, everything has to do with a part of you that I'm in love with Naruto said. Your H stands for heavenly Naruto pulled away from her and kissed her right hand. Your I stands for intelligent Naruto kissed her forehead, getting a blush out of her. Your N stands for nurturer kiss to her left hand. Your A stands for aspiring kiss to her neck another blush. Your T stands for truthful kiss to her cheek. Naruto blushed himself for the final one. But the A Naruto slowly leaned in before kissing her on the lips, the background burst into fireworks as the floating candles turned into bursting light that faded away soon after. Hinata was in an amazing amount of serenity and peace her body shook and she was trying not to black out like she was so accustomed to doing. Naruto finally pulled away from her lips, breathing slightly hard, just as she was. Suddenly, he smiled. Amazing. Naruto smiled before relishing in her touch, but he soon frowned the decision he had made concerning Hinata might change things, he just hoped that she wouldn't change, just because of what he had to say. Hinata I have something to tell you something that has come up in the time you've been gone. Hinata knew that it was serious judging by his tone, but at the moment, nothing could bring her down from the high she was feeling right now. Tsunade smiled at the sight of Naruto and Hinata hugging and talking. It took him long enough to smarten up. He had finally confessed how he felt, but how would she take the situation he was in? Tsunade just shook her head. It would only get worse as things kept coming up. Like the specific nin requested for the mission she received this morning. Poor Naruto said Shizun with a worried expression on her face. Tsunade smirked. If he's anything like his past sensei, it's more like lucky Naruto, said Tsunade, as she played with a scroll with the kanji for snow on the top of it. Naruto dodged a kunai thrown at him absentmindedly as he thought back to the night he had with Hinata, and her reply to what he had told her concerning his current predicament. Was that even possible? Did she truly feel that way? If she did not, she really knew how to hide her feelings well. Which is expected of a Hyuga clan member. Absent-mindedly dodging the strikes from the assailant, Naruto also thought about the random early morning call he had received from Tsunade, about two missions he had to do all wrapped in one. Apparently, Tamari Sabaku was in town, and he was assigned to escort her to Suna before heading out to Spring Country to give a document to the princess while escorting her back to Kanoha too. Naruto can look in the mirror and tell himself that he was dense. But this entire mission seemed a bit far-fetched to him. First of all, Tamari has been going back and forth between Suna and Kanoha for years now, what's the sense of keeping her company on the way there all of a sudden? Secondly, couldn't a Kanoha Express Falcon deliver what he had and the princess be escorted by her own guards? Unless of course. They specifically asked for him that would be weird. But Naruto didn't care much, all he knew was he had to meet Tamari in six hours at the Kanoha gates to begin heading to Suna then Spring Country, and he really had no time to bother playing with this person that had been attacking him for the past two minutes. Ducking under a jab, Naruto grabbed the person's arm before moving into their personal space, back to their right side, before Naruto pulled the arm down, lifting the person in the air and crashing down onto the floor. Putting his legs to the other side of the person's face, Naruto secured his hold and had the person in an armbar lock, causing the person to tap his leg in pain. Letting go of the arm, Naruto rolled back up to his feet and grabbed Konohimaru up before ruffling his head. You'll have to do way better than that in order to defeat me, said Naruto with a grin as he dusted himself off and turned around to head back to the village. Konohimaru sighed as he walked alongside Naruto throughout the village. This wasn't the first time Konohimaru attacked him randomly and definitely would not be the last. Villagers seen it as a normal occurrence, so they did not bother with disturbing the antics of the last Sirotobi. So how was your mission? Asked Naruto to Konohimaru as they continued their walk throughout the village, nodding to female villagers and speeding up their walk as a crowd began forming. It was pretty easy. Simple delivery to Kiri. Nothing too special. Wish there was some action, but that's been lacking a lot often as of late, replied Konohimaru as he sped up his walk as a bunch of females were right behind him and Naruto and were whispering. 
I suppose that's Naruto trailed off as he looked behind him and found a bunch of females looking right at him and Konohamaru. How did? Asked Naruto to Konohamaru, only to see the little brat running away from the scene screaming something that sounded like. May the will of fire be with you my brother. Naruto sweat dropped before smiling. Ladies. 15 minutes later after getting glomped from all angles, cage bunch and replacements, Shunshin and a Horatian seal on his door. Naruto slammed the front door of his house panting and sweating with his clothing, looking like he ran through a shredder machine. His face and body also had many different colors of kiss marks. Naruto sighed in bliss at the escape he had managed to pull off. Taking his time to compose himself, Naruto made his way into the house. To his knowledge, Anko would be somewhere in an area she wasn't supposed to be in, trying to do something she wasn't supposed to be doing. Like in the underground training arena chucking kunai at targets. But he supposed that was to be expected as she was just like him and lying down and doing nothing was not his forte either. Apparently, Anko was fully recovered and no problems had risen from her seal being removed. Except a few differences that Naruto neglected to tell her, not knowing how she would react. But watching Anko suddenly have loads of chakras suddenly appear in her chakra coils, enhanced hearing and healing, a rise in her metabolism and extreme stamina, he figured today was a good time to tell her. He had about three hours he could use, dodging all sorts of weaponry she would throw at him after Tsunade broke to him what now had to occur. Should he even think about it now? Probably not he should go and tell Anko that. Okage Tower. Tsunade sighed as she brought up her next development she had to relate to Naruto. I recently did some test on Anko Midarashi concerning her removal of her seal, said Tsunade as she looked at Naruto seriously. And? Asked Naruto impatiently as Tsunade loved to drag out answers. Well, apparently when you removed her seal, your chakra began to be used as a catalyst to replace the excess chakra remaining in her systems from Orochimaru's taint, replied Tsunade. Basically what I'm saying is, Anko has developed some rather peculiar abilities from having your chakra inserted into her system. I've talked it over with the council. I wish I could change the final decision, but I actually agree with it myself, Tsunade slowly smirked. You'll have to. Naruto sighed as he made his way to the basement. Watching Anko hit those targets, he could tell this discussion will either be good. A shriek from Anko emanated from her throat as a kunai made a hole right through the target, then kept going, then planted itself into the wall. Yes. Good or painful. Naruto jumped as Anko hopped onto him, her unexpected weight carrying them down to the floor with Anko straddling him and her face inches from his. Narukan came to visit little old me. Oh how excited this makes me. Said Anko with a playful grin, inside though, she really was happy to see him, but she refused to show vulnerability to him any more than she needed to. Though, his influence and talks convinced her to at least change her outfit. She now wore a bra. That had taken at least two weeks for Naruto to get that done, oh the blood loss, and mostly long-sleeved white turtlenecks with purple ninja slacks. This was her primary outfit seeing as how she was still on the inactive duty list. Though with the way she was feeling, she was sure she would be on there for a little while. She did not know how to tell Naruto or anyone, but lately she had begun throwing up in the mornings and missed a very vital part of her femininity, which made her feel a bit anxious and nervous, scared and unsure of herself. Lately she had begun feeling moody towards anything moving, and it had brought her to getting a checkup by Tsunade herself. She really did not know how to tell the news she had received to Naruto. But seeing as how Xion was out shopping for a bit, Anko felt that this was the best time to let him know of her discovery. Hey Naruto I. Anko I think I. They both stopped suddenly as they realized they both had something to say. You first Naruto said. Anko closed her eyes and sighed before pulling herself off of Naruto, but still sat on him, curling up on his lap, as Naruto leaned his body up to accommodate her weight, which made Naruto ecstatic, as he was beginning to feel a bit excited at her being there with her legs around him. His eyes glazed a bit at a sudden memory before focusing on the current situation. Naruto I've begun to feel different. Anko said silently, trying to find words to explain what she had to say to him. I've been throwing up in the mornings and my body has begun to feel really weird, I feel stronger and my chakra has seemed to get stronger things I used to never want to do and crave, I've begun to do with more desire, so I went to Tsune to find out what's wrong with me. Naruto, thinking that he already knew what was wrong with her, decided to speak up to let her know that he already knew, sadly, Anko wanted to speak her revelation as well resulting in. And you now have a bit of the Uzumaki bloodline, and I'm pregnant. That. Naruto's eyes went from reassured to shock, and so did Anko's. It was like a ticking time bomb in the Namika's training arena. But the bomb just went off. Okage Tower. I I I I I it. Tsunade was silent before she chuckled silently. Her chuckles changed into laughs, before her laughs made her lean her head back to the ceiling, and a loud guffaw emanated from her throat as she finally slowly got back at years of pranks from Naruto. Raising a glass up as if giving a toast to herself, Tsunade grinned. The revenge and the future of Naruto, may he live prosperous with his decisions as they all come to him at once, Tsunade would drink to that.
Namek is training ground. Naruto was shocked. How? When? Why? Who? How did this happen? When did she find out? Why did she tell him now and who told her that? Naruto thought back to that one night. That emotional turn of events that changed their friendship to more than friends without either really knowing it. Flashback no jutsu. Naruto came in from another quick escort mission to Waterfall and was rather tired from the long journey. He had gone non-stop to the village and all he really wanted was a good night of sleep. But some sniffles brought that thought to smithereens as Naruto made his way up the stairs and followed his ears to the sound he had been hearing. Humming up to the door of the guest room, with the door left ajar, Naruto silently opened the door to find Anko curled up in fetal position, softly crying herself to sleep. Silently approaching her, Naruto put one head on her leg softly, making her scream and fright and jump up in fear, only to see it was Naruto. Wasting no time, Anko lunged into his arms and cried louder, letting her emotions run out. Naruto held her in his arms and led her to his bedroom before sitting down on the bed, his back on the bed stand, patiently waiting for her to stop her tears as he ran his fingers through her hair. After an emotional couple of minutes more, Anko was finally back in speaking conditions. Another nightmare? Naruto asked silently, Anko nodded into his chest. Well, all you had to do was call for me, you know I would have been here in a matter of seconds Anko-chan. No delay, whispered Naruto as he continued to offer his self to her, being the shoulder for her to cry on. This was the fourth time that she had been scared of nightmares. Coincidentally, every time was when Naruto was away on a three times she would send for him and he would arrive not an hour later. Usually she would be sleeping in his arms as she had become getting used to. But tonight tonight was something else. Slowly looking into his eyes for reassurance, Anko found more than she bargained for as she found Naruto also silently crying. And that made everything to her clear. She had found the one person she had been yearning for in life. Someone willing to be there for her, care for her, love and cry for her. She refused to not let her feelings be shown. She let all her fear fade away. Slowly she grasped his jounin jacket, pulling herself up and putting her legs around him, she stripped his jounin vest off, Naruto too scared to move. He had never seen her act like this, what was she doing? Anko tossed his flak jacket aside and then removed his undershirt, a navy blue turtleneck. Looking him into his eyes, Anko wanted to convey her feelings with words, but decided that actions would be better. Softly she kissed his lips, and electricity ran through the duo's spine. It felt right. Naruto let his hands drop to the sides of the bed as the kiss deepened into more, his desires and hidden feelings for her slowly beginning to leak out slowly. Unknown to both, Kayashi closed the door with his tail, yipping in approval. Naruto placed his hands on her back before kissing her forwardly, making her fall on the bed with her arms locked behind his neck, removing her shirt between kisses, Naruto breathed before taking it up another level. They lost themselves in a night of passion, desire lust and fiery emotions as they tossed and turned into the night, pleasuring one another with actions they both did not think they had in them. They made love into the morning. Just to fall into it again by night. That was the night their friendships began to relate. Naruto suddenly knew what occurred and smiled at Anko, who thought he would lash out against her and the baby. Well, I suppose the only question I have is do you want the child to sign the snake contract or the toad contract, said Naruto softly as he pecked her forehead. Anko smiled and closed her eyes as tears leaked down her eyes. You brat. You crazy snake woman. Anko grinned evilly as she sniffled. But you're my brat she said as her voice cracked. And you're my crazy snake woman, Naruto confirmed as he kissed her again, the two of them falling to the floor in another feel of emotion, bliss and passion. Five hours later, Naruto, fully dressed for the mission to Suna then spring country, left a note by Anko's head on the bed as she slept peacefully. Maybe it was wrong for them to be doing what they did and not be married, as that was what Naruto always believed would be when he would want to start to have family, but he had no doubt now that despite what people thought, Anko would be a great mother for the child to come. Leaving a kiss on her forehead, Naruto made his way down the stairs to where Shion was awaiting him. Naruto inwardly cringed, after a few weeks of having Shion and Anko argue between one another, Naruto finally sat Shion down and explained to her some very key things that could not continue, as such, Shion slowly began to sort out her differences, and her and Anko actually became good friends, despite the jealously Shion felt seeing Anko hug up on Naruto so freely. But that was not to say Shion didn't get her own time to spend with Naruto. Naruto would take her all over Konoha, to the parks and even the playgrounds, sometimes to talk and just enjoy being in the company of one another. But she would not be giving up in her pursuit of Naruto's heart, pregnant Anko or not. Stopping in front of the girl, Naruto looked at her seriously. Please take care of her Shion, as taking care of her would be the same as taking care of me, said Naruto with determination and trust, lacing his words. Shion would have been heartbroken to hear how Naruto addressed Anko, but she was way too adamant and in love with Naruto to let his words mean that it was over in the race for his heart. Slowly wrapping her arms around his neck and kissing him softly, Shion let go and whispered a reply. 
I will, Naruto-kun, and when you come back, you can let me physically take care of you, she said, which would have sounded seductive to any man, but after getting to know Xiang, Naruto knew she meant everything but that. I'll be back soon. Naruto said with finality. I'll be waiting. Naruto grinned a smile that made her heart beat faster before pecking her on the cheek and disappearing in a yellow flash. Xian held her heart to her chest as she sighed in bliss. I'll never give up Naruto. You are the only one for me, Xian said to herself. Yamanaka flower shop, Ino drummed her fingers on the counter in boredom. Ever since that day with Naruto, she had nothing but him on her mind. Everything reminded her of him. The flowers in the shop, the blue sky, laughing kids, Naruto passing by on his way to the Kanoha gate, the fourth Hokage saw Naruto. Ino rushed outside in a pale blonde blur and flashed in front of him, halting his movements. Naruto smiled as he put his hand behind his back. Hey Ino-chan, long time no see. How have you been? Ino smirked. I've been bored. It hasn't been much fun doing missions then nothing, I see you're going on a mission, and how long will you be away? Ask Ino, trying to see if she can get an estimated time so she can try and get him to hang out with her again. Naruto put his hands behind his head and looked to the sky to try and guess how long he would be out. Well, depending on how long this will take, probably a week and a half. Ino smirked and blinked slowly while coming closer to him and zipped up his flak jacket, whispering in his ear. Well, when you get back, I was thinking I can make you some dinner in payment for all of the lovely stuff you bought me when you took me shopping. Why don't you stop by my house when you get back and we can work from there? Said Ino with a smile, knowing a man's heart was through his stomach, and with her cooking skills, Naruto would be wrapped around her little fingers. Sure, I can do that, sounds like a really good date, I accept. I'll be back sooner than you know it for some of your delicious cooking Ino-chan, said Naruto as suddenly hugged Ino, making her jump at the sudden action. Removing himself from her arms, feeling a bit cold from the sudden loss of warmth, he made his way to the gates, waving his hand up in a quick bye to her blushing face. See you when I get back. Enjoy the flower. Naruto said as he turned around and continued on to the tower. Ino raised an eyebrow at that. Flowers. What flow? Touching her ear, Ino smiled as she felt the rose her head put behind her ear, looking at the table, she found a card with his name on it addressed to her. Ino squealed inwardly, when did Naruto get so smooth? Making her way inside, the clone that was in the shape of a tula poofed away, its job done. Kanoha Gates. Approximately six hours later, Naruto was right in front of Tamari, ready to escort her into Suna before making his way to Spring Country. Tamari inwardly blushed, who knew Naruto would become so handsome. Looking at the image of Fourth Hokage on the mountain, Tamari smirked. Like father, like son. Ready to go Tamari-san? Naruto asked respectfully. Tamari was a bit surprised at the respectful tone he suddenly took up, he used to be a brat, loud-mouthed and obnoxious, now he was respectful, punctual and dressed rather well if she was to tell the truth. I am. The trip from Kanoha to Suna will take about three days if we were to travel non-stop, but we are in no rush, so this trip will take about five. I plan on stopping in towns and staying in a hotel room, I hope you do not mind, said Tamari as she turned to make her way out of Kanoha. Inside, Naruto wanted to cringe at the time it would take, but then he realized he can just flash his way to spring country, and that would take time out of his travels. Jumping into the tree lines, Tamari was off into her journey, Naruto behind her not a second later. Mission begins now I suppose Naruto thought. Little did he know, Tamari thought the same exact thing. Naruto found that, despite her appearances, Tamari was rather intelligent, sarcastic, funny and great fun to talk to. So far, they had been breaking down the concept of Winjutsu when the sun had begun to fall, and Tamari decided to stop at the nearest small village for the night. It was then that the situation became awkward. So there is only one more available room as a convention is being held in town, no problem, book the room and I'll sleep outside, said Naruto without hesitation. It would not be the first time it occurred for him where he had to sleep outside, he was a ninja for crying out loud, it was a normal occurrence for him. Tamari felt bad, but her respect for him went up a notch at his statement. So much had been learned in their talks. He was respectful, ambitious, courteous, and a great conversationalist, Tamari knew right there that this would be a fun mission. But it was time to add some more fun to it. Nonsense, you will be sleeping with me, she said, trying to test him to see if he was a gentleman in his thoughts too. Naruto's mouth opened and he blushed a bit before closing his mouth quickly and scratching the back of his head embarrassingly. You mean I will be in the room with you, but on the couch right? Naruto asked. Besides, he did not want Shikamaru to catch wind that his girlfriend was in a bed with him, that would be a rather awkward conversation. Tamari chuckled before upping the ante, slowly strutting towards him, grabbing his flak vest and bringing her nose up really close to his. What if I want you in bed with me, Naruto-kun? Asked Tamari, trying to get a rise out of him. Naruto got really nervous, Gara would be after him, not to mention Kankuro and Shikamaru what was he to do. I, I don't think that would be a good idea, I mean, wouldn't Shikamaru get mad? 
Tamari raised an eyebrow before getting what he meant. Laughing at his nervousness, Tamari answered him. Why would he get mad at me sleeping in bed with you? We aren't together anymore, Tamari added as an afterthought. The two had decided a while ago that friendship would just be better off, besides, what she was currently doing she willingly volunteered to do for her village, though Naruto probably did not have a clue what the real mission was. Continuing on her teasing, Tamari slapped some Ryo on the desk while still staring into Naruto's confused eyes. My husband and I will take that final room, and I suggest you not bother us and get the best noise-canceling device you have yet. Tamari smirked at Naruto and whispered to the hotel attendant. I'm a screamer. Hotel room, Tamari chuckled at Naruto's depressive face as a cloud rained over his head as he mumbled about how the hotel attendant now thought they were a freaky couple, how he thought she was taken the whole time by Shikamaru, and why she teased him so unexpectedly. Tamari sat on the bed and crossed one leg over her other, putting a cute pout on her face, she decided to keep the charade up. But Naruto-kun what if I wasn't playing around? What if I told her I'm a screamer for a reason? Don't you want to find out? She whispered seductively. Naruto's face became redder again. W what are you t talking about? Naruto stuttered as he backed up against the door in shock. Why was she messing around like this? He couldn't tell if she was serious or joking, and it was making him a bit nervous. Okay, so her and Shikamaru were no longer dating, he was sure her boyfriend and Gara would kill him if he was to get involved with the wind mistress. Damari stood up and slowly walked towards Naruto, a cocky smirk on her face. Each step felt like an eternity to Naruto, his breathing was getting heavy as he felt his mind and blood working against him, she was getting him worked up from just a mere walk, she was so confident in her movements, sure of herself and powerful. It was as if she knew she could get what she wanted with little effort, all of this attracted her to him, and he was just never willing to admit it to her. He kind of harbored a crush on her. He would ultimately be lying if he was to say he no longer had one on her. But seeing her like this and being around her for longer than he ever had been before, the feeling was intensifying. Damari stopped in front of him before slowly moving her right hand. Naruto closed his eyes and waited for whatever she was about to do to him. The doorknob turned. Well, what are we waiting for Naruto? Let's go get something to eat. Tamari said with a smirk on her pretty face. That was when Naruto blanched in shock. She just pranked him. Naruto slowly fell to the floor with his back against the door. Closing his eyes he tried to drown out her loud cocky laughs and figure out how he got into the situation. He had Ino trying to cook food for him, in which he was sure was going to be in an intimate setting, he had Shion waiting for him at the house, he had a pregnant bloodline bearing, seal Les Anko who was going through hormonal issues, he had a random Samui, who he had spent lots of time with as of late, training or just talking, he had an understanding girl no woman, and Hinata, now he had a flirtatious Tamari mocking him, and he was on his way to visit a princess who he used to have a crush on. Naruto placed his head up to the ceiling and sighed before placing a rhetorical question. What's next? A girl from Kiri and Iwa on their way to Konoha. Naruto suddenly felt a shiver go down his spine and decided never ever again to ask for anything more than what he already had. Picking himself up, he decided to catch up to Tamari, he might as well have some fun before anything else came along. Kiri Mizukage's office, Darumi Mei stared blankly at the letter received from Tsunade, the current god in cage. It was a simple letter that held loads of power and responsibility. She was to find a suitable wife for a clan head from Kanoha in order to complete the alliance or find a clan head to offer in return, simple enough. But then she read just who the clan head was, to which she was to find a girl for him. And an evil grin slowly rose on the face of Mei as she called for her guards, letter slowly turning into flames as her bloodline went through it. At the carriage and guards ready. Mei giggled as blood dripped out of her nose. It's time to get me a man, Iwa village, Anoki ducked behind his desk, his son right next to him as countless books and chairs went flying around the room. If he had known that Kuritsuchi would generate such a fuss about being signed up to get married to a Konoha heir as the final piece of their grand alliance, he would not have told her at all. He would have simply gave her a scroll and sent her off to Konoha and let Tsune deal with the irate Jounin girl. Kuritsuchi calm down, you don't even know who the person is. Said Katsuchi among the ruckus, lifting his head up to try and placate his daughter only to throw himself back to the floor as a chair crashed against the spot his head was at, the edge of the table being chipped off. How dare you sign me up to be married off like some weakling from a Kanoha clan. There are countless Kanoichi who would have fit the bill, now you're telling me I'm to be married to too. Kuritsuchi looked at the scroll in her hand before calming down. Him? The room went silent. No desks or chairs, book or scrolls were thrown, no more damage to the office. Anoki and Katsuchi slowly lifted up their heads to see Kuritsuchi deep in thought, sitting on a pile of upturned books and reading the paper. I suppose he would be a right suitor. Strong, powerful, qualities of a leader not to mention him, Kuritsuchi calmly rolled up the scroll and stood up, facing the Tsuchikage and her father, Kuritsuchi calmly smiled, her anger forgotten, now that she knew who the person was. 
when do I leave? Inoki sweat dropped. Females I will never understand them thought Naruto, his hands full of bags that were not his, who knew that, just like Ino, Tamari was a heavy shopper, the only difference being she knew how to spend her own money. Guess she was more independent than most Kanoichi. Which was refreshing as Naruto's frog wallet could live another day. It was then that Naruto just remembered something he had found specifically for the girl in front of him, buying up diamonds from Iron Country, a satisfactory gleam in her eyes. Hopefully she'll like it Naruto thought to himself. Suddenly he bumped into someone, apologizing profusely, his breath hitched as he looked at a really beautiful girl. She had a heart-shaped face with long dark hair stopping at her mid-back, her eyes were brown, and her face was flawless, not a pimple, not a cut, nothing. She was wearing a simple dark green shirt with a red skirt that stopped at her ankles, all around the skirt were blue flowers, and on her feet were brown sandals. She was carrying a bag filled with contents that let Naruto know she was shopping. But it was the look in her eyes that made him nervous. Sorry for bumping into you like that, Naruto said kindly, feeling the eyes of Tamari on his back as he addressed the girl. The girl smiled and held onto his arm softly. It was my fault, I should have been more careful, I hope you're not injured, if you are, I can patch you up in my house, said the girl innocently, but Naruto had been receiving wishes like this from women for years since the pain invasion, he'd be foolish to accept this. Oh, haha, <laughs> I'm fine, thanks for the off. Is something wrong Naruto-kun? Tamari asked with a hint of something extra in her tone and voice. Naruto was pretty sure this would be a great time to get back to the hotel, as Tamari looked to be finished with her shopping. Nothing, Tamari-san, I'm fine, this lady here was just apologizing as she bumped into me, the girl nodded. Yes, I was just telling your boyfriend that if he was injured, I'd be willing to help patch him up at my house, said the girl in a tone that also indicated another extra meaning to it. Tamari smiled, but her grin was reminiscent of Sai as she grabbed Naruto by the arm. Well, we thank you for the help, but we must be going off now, sorry that Naruto-kun here is so clumsy, won't happen again bye. Said Tamari swiftly as she walked away, still holding on to Naruto's arm, her hand slowly slipping down to grabbing his hand. Naruto said nothing. Because he knew two things now. One. Tamari was jealous for some odd reason. Two. She wanted to hold hands, specifically his hand because she was the one that slid her hands into his. Three. She wasn't flirting back in the room as much as he thought she was. Naruto inwardly smirked. I think it's time to even the odds Tamari-chan. Hotel. Back in the room, Naruto watched as Tamari put all of her purchases into a huge storage scroll. Deciding now would be a good time as any, Naruto interrupted her by grabbing onto her wrist before she could grab another item. Tamari-san, I actually just remembered that I had found something for you a while back, since I have the time to give it to you, I figured I let you have it right now, said Naruto as he went into his hip pouch and whipped out a very small scroll with a kanji for gift on it, softly putting it into her hands, Naruto slowly sat down on the bed. Open it. Naruto said with a grin. His grin slowly widened as the smoke expelled from the gift and the scroll dropped, in the smoke, a silent gasp and whispers of. No, he did not get this for me. How did he find this? I've been trying to find one for years. Came from the smoke. As it cleared, a battle fan was seen the design was rather simple, as the metal outside had symbols of five elements, it's when you opened the fan that it got a bit different. There were five flaps, within each flap was a seal with a different element, the fan was the rarest of all fans, as when you channel chakra through the fan with the element out, the wind would become powered extra with a specific seal, people killed for a fan like this, but only three were made in existence, this one just so happened to belong to a wind maiden Naruto had met a while back, she was slowly fading away into the next life and decided to give the fan to Naruto, saying he would know who the rightful wielder the fan belonged to. Naruto chuckled as the fan blew some wind with each open of the flaps. Seems as if you are the correct wielder, said Naruto as he stood up and made his way to the bathroom. Welp, I am going to shower and prepare to go to bed, I hope you enjoy your Naruto had to stop as Tamari flung herself onto his back and the two collapsed on the bed. As Naruto turned around, Tamari hugged him excitedly before getting off of him, unknowingly straddling him, she continued thanking him over and over for the present, to which Naruto said it was nothing. No Naruto you don't understand, this was a clan artifact, it's been lost for years, this I have to repay you for this, Tamari said resolutely. Naruto smirked inwardly as he began his prank. Slowly and softly running his hand through her hair, Naruto pushed himself up and closer to her and lowered his voice. Repay me huh? Naruto said huskily in her ear, making her shiver a bit. Naruto continued the charade as he brushed his lips against hers tenderly, his hand slowly grabbing her side as he turned her over, putting her on the bed and him kneeling over her, Naruto slowly removed his hit I ate from his forehead, his blonde hair spilling out over her, but not long enough to hit her face. He then slowly took off his flak jacket, as his long cloak was already discarded by the door, leaving him in a white turtleneck. I know how you can repay me I have a good idea right now it's just you me on this bed in a hotel room and I wonder what can we get into a. Tamari Haim. 
said Naruto with even more bass and huskiness to his voice. Damari's heart was pumping faster and her nerves were twitching. What was Naruto doing to her right now? She wanted him she wanted him right now, Naruto was removing his shirt and she couldn't help but wonder when he would start to remove hers. Naruto slowly made his way towards her face and whispered in her ear. This is how it feels to be close to ecstasy, only to be left hanging to Mari-chan, two can play this game cutie, said Naruto with a smile as he kissed her on the lips, watching her eyes widened. Removing his lips from her, Naruto got off of her and made his way into the bathroom whistling a tune. The Mari was hot and bothered at the moment, who knew that Naruto could do such a thing to her with such ease. Sighing and trying to calm herself down, Tamari was failing horribly. It seemed like this was the perfect mission, the best day, and Naruto was the best man. Tamari stopped at that thought. Man something she had to be honest with herself with. After the situation with Shikamaru fell through, the men that were available in her life were little to none, all of the Suna Jounin were either trying to get with her, simply because she was a rare piece, and even then they had to get through the second coming of Sasori of the Red Sands and Gara, her brother, and the Kazakiage. But then there was Naruto. Everything she wanted in a man, kind, strong, caring, not just for himself but for others, respectful, unafraid and. Damari blushed. Handsome. This mission was not just an escort mission, it was a decision, one that she had the sole responsibility to do. The mission was finished as far as she concerned. Whipping out a scroll, she quickly filled in what she had to say before summoning a Suna vulture and attaching the scroll, sending it out, Tamari turned around and sat on the bed. It was official. Tamari would not be getting to know Naruto Uzumaki. The two Suna guards perched in front of the gates of Suna knew that whenever Tamari Subaku returned, she was all business and usually immensely tired and tense from her long travels from Suna to Konoha. Well, imagine their surprise when they heard her laughter echo in the air before a blur stopped in front of them and a huge cloud of sand covered their stone-like faces. Naruto planted Tamari on her feet and brushed the sand out of her hair. And you said that I couldn't make it through the desert in sage mode in five minutes. You should have known better than to bet against a great Uzumaki Naruto. Now, what do I get for winning? Said Naruto confidently, eyes reverting back to his natural blue ones. I can think of a few rewards for you, said Tamari suggestively as she put her arms around his torso and leaned into him. I think a big plate of food would do me well, said Naruto densely, ignoring Tamari's obvious innuendo. Tamari and the guards inwardly shook their head. Naruto sometimes just never changed. I agree with that statement Naruto-san. Food will be on me for bringing my sister back safe, said a voice. All three people that had previously pegged Naruto as dense instantly realized why he said what he said. These a genius thought the same three. Ara. Good to see that your hair is still red, said Naruto, Tamari now out of his arms and next to him, though her shoulder remained touching his. It is equally as nice to see you here in person instead of the shadow clones that used to replace you whenever you visited, said Gara with a straight face. Naruto chuckled nervously and scratched the back of his head now. Well there is no need for that now, I am here in living color. So what's up, how's the village been, said Naruto, grabbing Tamari's hand as he walked further into the village with Gara, not noticing the brief eye contact between sibling and the noticeable smirk on Gara's face and the red cheeks on Tamari. Hours later Subaku residence, are you sure Gara? I kind of have another place to go to after this. I can always come visit another day, said Naruto, as he was being dragged into the home of the Subakubi Gara. Well more like his sand was doing the pushing, but you get the point. Do things. 1. You must stay tonight, eat and rest. Because 2. Tsunade sent a letter with a change in mission location. You are no longer headed to snow country, but to earth country, said Gara calmly. Naruto stared at Gara for a good five seconds before shrugging his shoulders and plopping down on the couch. Now where is the mask-faced freaky bandit in pajama gear? Asked Naruto with a smile on his face. I'm with your girl. Yelled an irate Kankuro in reply. I thought they had incest laws in Suna. Yelled Naruto back. Looking at Gara, Naruto began counting down. Five, four, three, two and. A huge caterpillar made of wood came crashing out of the ground, its mouth opening and Senbin being sent at Naruto, who back flipped over the couch and rushed to his left, Senbin littering the wall. Naruto jumped in the air and Kawarimi with a stone, grabbed the snake by its mouth and channeled a Rasengan. Sawdust began flying in the air in the background as Gara looked away and stared at the concerned servants. It's a normal occurrence. Everything will be back in order soon enough, this will get docked from Kankuro's pay as usual, please proceed with cooking dinner. Thank you, Gara said calmly. The servants nodded resolutely and continued their duties. Suddenly sand arose from the ground and halted Naruto and Kankuro's movement. That is enough. Gara said, leaving no room for argument. Naruto smiled and put the caterpillar down, Kankuro emerging from the back. You are very lucky brat. I was about to send those senbin right back at you, said Kankuro confidently. Naruto raised his eyebrow before looking at Kankuro's finger, which was connected to every single senbin he threw at Naruto, which was now in the air. 
Saying nothing, Naruto simply turned around and summoned shadow clones. We can always take this outside, he said seriously. Then Kuro looked at Gara, who simply pointed at the back door. Oh. The two calmly walked outside, Senbin floating in caterpillar dragged by Naruto outside, where after a few seconds, sounds of scuffling and fighting began again. Stretching a bit and popping the cork on his gourd, Gara too went outside to join the festivities. After all, if you cannot beat them. Join them. Naruto sat on the rail next to Gara at the Kazakiage tower overlooking the village. That was absolutely delicious that dinner, said Naruto. I am glad you enjoyed it. I am just happy that we cooked as much as we did. Maybe Jinchuriki should only eat together once a year, said Gara jokingly. Naruto nodded in agreement before getting serious. Can I be honest? Asked Naruto. Gara nodded. Damari. She didn't request me to just escort her did she? Naruto asked. Gara nodded. You are more perceptive than I thought, said Gara. So what was the real parameters of that mission? Naruto asked again. Gara said nothing after a while. Crossing his arms over his chest Gara closed his eyes. In all honesty, it was a very important piece to a plan that is cage, I cannot relate to you at this time. Just know that you personally will be seen to Mari more often, said Gara. Naruto nodded. I figured so. It seems things are moving a bit fast in this alliance business, said Naruto in reply. So you know? Asked Gara, not really surprised. I do. Then you know the many hands that want you to ask for their marriage, said Gara. Affirmative, how will you function? In fact, how do you function? Asked Gara. Naruto simply smiled. I don't. I just let it happen, knowing things will all work out for the better, said Naruto. Ara nodded. The two sat there in silence for a bit, watching the street life and the scenery and beauty of Suna. Do more questions, Naruto said suddenly. Go. Oh, you heard the discussion between Tamari and myself when we got here didn't you? Ara nodded. Affirmative. How does that make you feel? Asked Naruto. I wanted to brutally lop your head off, crush your arm, pop the other out and beat you with it, then kill you very slowly before spreading your ashes to the four corners of this world and hide the insides of your body, but that would bring up too many issues, and you did not reply to her very forward suggestion, Gara said as if talking about the weather. Naruto chuckled loudly. Man, I had the crush on your sister for the longest. If I wasn't focused on Sakura at the time, I think I would have replaced her with trying to take Tamari out on a date or two. Just being truthful, said Naruto honestly. How long have you been holding that in? Asked Gara, who turned around to stare at the person who had appeared two minutes ago, who heard everything. Right after the Chunin exams. When you're in the hospital, you get to thinking about a lot. I thought one day. She's strong, beautiful and deadly. I am sure men bow at her feet in Suna every day, but you were still crazy back then, so I doubt they would try that, said Naruto jokingly. Well that is good to know. Now you can tell her everything to her face, said Gara seriously, looking at Tamari standing there smiling. Naruto looked and his eyes widened in shock at how she appeared and heard his omission, so in embarrassment he jumped head first off the roof. Gara simply began to walk inside the tower as his job here was done. He's all yours, he said as he kept his stride. Thanks, she said in reply. Walking to the railing and looking down, she made eye contact with the Naruto standing on the side of the building, sticking with chakra, smacking a hand over his face repeatedly. Too loud, too loud, too loud. You know it's kind of cute that you waited for so long to say anything about it, said Tamari, breaking him from both his talking to himself in concentration, making him slip and fall. Only to float upwards as sand lifted him up from the building. Inwardly thanking Gara, Naruto landed back on the roof and grinned weakly at Tamari. Hi. Hi. Staring at one another, Naruto sighed. Well, the demon is out of the seal, now you know, said Naruto as he averted making eye contact. Tamari nodded and grabbed his head to make his eyes look at hers. Well, if you weren't a brat and wore so much orange back then, I could have went for you too, said Tamari truthfully. Really? I mean really? Said Naruto in shock then surprise. Of course. You saved my brother from the darkness that he was falling deeper in, and you never gave up in any of your dreams and ambition. I respected that, said Tamari as she moved her hand and grabbed his collar while looking at his chest, red hue on her cheeks. Then you came back three years later, stronger and as dense as ever, but still a little perceptive. Me and Shikamaru were together for one year, and nobody knew anything. But again, you saved my brother, she whispered as she got closer again and leaned on him. Then came the war. And again, you took everything head on and single-handedly prevented hundreds of deaths and saving the nation, said Tamari, and tapped his forehead. That was when I realized that my silly little fascination was way more than that. It went from fascination, to idolization, to amazement to well maybe others would call it a heavy crush, but I prefer saying I am captivated by you, said Tamari. Naruto looked at her deeply and could see no lie within her. Grabbing her hand, Naruto removed them from his body and turned back around to stare at the view and hold his hand up to point to everything behind him. Why me Tamari? There is so many other men that are better than me in the nation. 
Stronger, handsome, smarter and well maybe not stronger but the other two for sure, said Naruto seriously. Damari giggled and grabbed his hand. Silly Uzumaki. They don't have what I need. They have what I want. It's not hard to understand Naruto. You have this thing about you that makes even the greatest enemy instantly want to be your friend. You can tell and do things that nobody can, and you care. You're so caring. It's not something I understood at first, but now. Damari grabbed his other hand. Now I love you for it. Naruto's heart began feeling pretty heavy after that statement. Wow. He mumbled. Tamari nodded. Wow is right. So yes Naruto Uzumaki, I chose you to be my future, and I will choose you 99 times out of 100, said Tamari seriously. 99? Asked Naruto. Well, I did think Sasuke was cute before he went crazy, she said jokingly. Naruto laughed and pulled her into her. I will make that 99 a 100% Naruto then, said Naruto seriously. Tamari smirked. You better. Because after all of these years of me denying it Naruto, no other woman will deny me from having you Naruto. At this Tamari strengthened her hold on Naruto's arms and brought him in a bit, eyes turning red and in the background the sky turned black and screams began emanating in the air as flames showed up behind Tamari. No one, she said in a demonic tone. Naruto nodded fast. Nobody Tamari Haim, I understand 100% you are mine's heart, soul and strength and body, and did I mention heart, said Naruto really fast. Everything disappeared and Tamari smiled. Good. I expect a really nice ring when all of this gets hashed out Nerukun, said Tamari sweetly as she led him into the tower. Now let's go to bed, but we're not married, but we can surely practice. You do mean just sleeping in the same bed right? Tamari said nothing. Simply hummed in response. Naruto began breaking in cold sweat. Women are scary. Earth country three days later. Naruto was, for lack of a better word, immensely tense as he walked through earth country and then in Iowa. Making eye contact with nobody, but wondering why all the looks he got were less of anger or rage, but more of sympathy and sadness. That's the chosen one. Indeed, I wish him luck. It seems Namaka's Minato will be getting paid back, but not like this. I wouldn't wish his fate on anyone. Godspeed Naruto. And more words like this led Naruto to the conclusion. Iwa was crazy. Finally reaching the tower and making his way up to the Tsuchikage, getting a hug from the front desk secretary. Which confused him more as he approached the front door and opened it up to find three people there. Anoki sat at his desk looking at Naruto with a small smirk on his face, his son Katsuchi turned his neck from his seat to wave at Naruto, who waved right back. Kuritsuchi however, glared at him the minute he entered the room to the minute he sat down, arms crossed and a huge scroll set by her feet, her face one of annoyance than anything else. What's up Gramps? Asked Naruto coolly, ignoring the glare from the Kinoichi and keeping his presence. Anoki shook his head. Brat, he replied before the two smirked at one another. So I have been brought here to believe I am bringing someone from Iwa to Konoha. Asked Naruto. Anoki nodded. That is correct. My granddaughter will be in Konoha for a month for an assignment concerning the alliance, and as I heard you were already at Suna, I requested your help in this matter, as you are the only one from Konoha, I believe my daughter has already spoken to and met. Not to mention you you're already out of the village, so it's more of killing two birds with one stone, said Anoki. Naruto nodded his head. That is correct. When do we leave? He asked. Anoki smirked. Now, said Anoki. Immediately Kuritsuchi walked up to Naruto until they were literally nose to nose. Now listen and listen good Yuzumaki. I have no ill will toward you, I do not like this arrangement. I do not trust you. I do not like you. But I respect your skill and nothing more. So I expect nothing but the most civil and respectable trip back to Kanoha ever. If not, I will not hesitate to burn your flesh until there is nothing that remains of you. Do not ogle me. Do not touch me. Do not. Naruto cut her off by being old Naruto that all women love to hate. Oh my goodness. Not another one of these ladies demanding things from me that I'm simply not going to remember. Why can't you just get your bags and let's go? Good grief lady, I don't even know you. I just got here. No disrespect, but shut up and let's go. Dadabeo you're giving me a headache, Naruto said pulling his hair and over dramatically making a scene. Kuritsuchi growled. I am serious boy, I am not to be trifled with, boy. I am stronger than you, you're the one acting like a little spoiled brat. Take that back. Shrieked Kuritsuchi as she got in Naruto's face. No you rock banshee. Yuzumaki Naruto backs down from nobody. Naruto yelled right back in her face. Itsuchi shook his head and smiled and Anoki simply chuckled. Haven't even left and you two are arguing like a married couple, he said simply. Naruto's and Kuritsuchi's eyes both widened and they both jumped away pointed at one another. I am never getting married to her him. They then looked at each other and pointed at each other, speaking in unison again. Stop saying what I'm saying. Cut it out. You brat. Erg. Naruto grabbed her scroll and stormed out, while Kuritsuchi hugged her father in anger and stormed off. Later Gramps, Naruto shouted angrily. Only I can call him that. 
Kuritsuchi yelled, nod on her forehead as she followed him out the door. Yeah well now it's two people. He's a bag of bones. You're his granddaughter, and that makes him gramps. You call him that one more time, and I will break your neck in three places. Really? Well bring it on then. I'm not afraid of you. The building shook again before more screaming occurred, their voice slowly fading out of hearing. Anoki sweat dropped and looked at his son, who said absolutely nothing at all. The two then broke into loud raucous laughter at the entire situation. I give it one night before they start to mesh, Anoki said. Yeah, she's finally being the child we know her to be, which works well with Naruto, as he's been a child forever, said Katsuchi. The be young, Anoki said to himself. Sounds of the two continued in the background, but the two family members could care less. Think they'll fight in or out the village? Katsuchi suddenly asked. Kuritsuchi has much more patience and loves Iwa too much to cause a scene, it's why they have gotten silent for a bit. But knowing Naruto he will make her lose her patience soon enough, Enoki said sagely. The anger of a woman will reign supreme. Naruto is just too stubborn to understand, and sure enough the yell echoed for all of Iwa to hear. That's it Yuzumaki. Doton. The rest was barely heard before the ground shook, and more sounds began going on before it got silent again. And they are off, said Enoki. Some time later, Naruto and Kuritsuchi jumped the trees in silent, a four-day journey ahead of them. The two had finally stopped arguing and bickering, but had refused to say anything more to one another. Both hoping the other would just go away. Naruto sighed and flipped off the tree to land on the ground. Kuritsuchi following suit. Why did you stop moving Yuzumaki? Asked Kuritsuchi. Because we need to get this situation hashed out now, I refuse to go any further until we resolve this matter, said Yuzumaki. Kuritsuchi gritted her teeth. Dropping her bag she began breathing hard and heavy. I feel. That this entire situation is unfair. I am hands down the greatest Kanoichi in all of Iowa at the moment and now I am going to be reduced to a mere trading piece for a grand alliance. To be some mini schoolhouse wife. Stuck doing dishes and merely cleaning, not being able to show the nation just what I can do and my abilities in the field. This is an outrage. Yelled Kuritsuchi finally, blinking away the tears that gathered on her face. Naruto said nothing, allowing her to get out all the rage she felt within her. For my entire life my plan was to be the best. To grow up and be the next Suchikage in the village. I was well on my way to attaining that goal, and now now I'm stuck to be someone's wife. To carry their seat and die, I don't want to. Kuritsuchi's sob story was cut off as Naruto grabbed her by her flak jacket and shook her. Stop it. You are not thinking with your head, you are just putting the worst thoughts in your head, and it is not healthy for you. First off, you can still be cage. This should not stop you. You can always go back to your village. Secondly, have you ever thought that it is an honor to be the one thing that signified the alliance? Without you, your village would not be able to fully fulfill the treaty. And more importantly, who in their right mind would limit you to a mere housewife? You can fly and blow up things. I'd have you in the front line of everything with the strength you have. So can you just cheer up and look at the positive side of things? Asked Naruto. Like what? Whispered Kuritsuchi hoarsely, throat hurting and composure now slowly piecing together. Well for one, you are traveling with the most awesomest ninja in the entire nation, Yuzumaki Naruto. Said Naruto joyfully smiling and his teeth glinting in the air. Kuritsuchi looked at him with a straight face before giggling. Naruto smiled. See, now that's more like it. You will enjoy Konoha. Don't worry. You'll fit right in. You can go shopping and go training and do all the other girly things you ladies do when you feel like it, you already know the ladies in Konoha anyway. It won't be as bad as you think. If it helps, I'll be with you every step of the way. As long as you don't turn into that bratty little chick from back in the office. Geez that was annoying, said Naruto as he began walking away, grabbing her bag as he walked. Kuritsuchi growled at him and ran after him. I'll show you bratty. Get over here. Naruto turned around and dashed off once the irate Iwa Kinoichi began giving him chase. I am not getting my skin burned by the likes of you. He screamed as he ran faster once he seen her catching up. Kuritsuchi also gave chase. But this time she had a smile on while doing it. Maybe this won't be as bad as I think, Kanoha. Tsunade was just finishing her paperwork, sipping a nice cup of sake out of her coffee mug that said world's greatest grandma a gift Naruto got for her from the land of iron. It was made of a very strong metal that Tsunade actually could not break if she wanted to. But she didn't it was a nice mug. Picking up one more paper. Tsunade began to read before she spat her sake out onto the floor. Something she never did. Reading the paper one more time, Tsunade took her coffee mug and threw it out the window, knowing it will be back soon enough. Grabbing the entire jug of sake, she began throwing it back and drinking all of the contents as fast as possible, as she read the letter she had received. This. Hick is getting more crazier than I thought mumbled Tsunade, as she pulled another jug out and looked at the Kiri letter. And the Suna letter. And the Iwa letter, not to mention the Kuma letters. All saying one name. Yuzumaki Naruto. Said a voice that halted said person. 
Naruto and Kuritsuchi were already in Konoha after Naruto decided to forego the scenic route and head back to Konoha. Opening his front door, Naruto was halted by his name occurring behind him. In his front yard. Which made him wonder how attentive he was to not notice the person appear. Turning around, Naruto raised an eyebrow and jumped back before pointing at the person in shock. What are you doing back from your mission so soon? You had to go to snow country. You left two days after me. Said Naruto. The person in question shook her head and stood in front of him. You didn't think you were the only one that could travel fast did you? Said Kakashi, as he read his book calmly, turning a page and giggling. Well why are you in my front lawn then? Naruto asked. That reason would be me, said a lady's voice. Naruto arched his neck over Kakashi to lay his eyes on Koyuki Kazuhana. Good to see you after all these years Naruto-kun, you have surely grown up since the last time we have seen each other, said Koyuki calmly. Naruto said nothing. But his thought was rather simple. Please. Tell me she is not here for me. She would be getting to know her fiancé. After finally making his way home from his extremely long travels, Naruto plopped on the bed and truly sighed in happiness and contemplation. It seems that after a bit of confusion, Koyuki was not here for the young Naruto to his utter joy and relief, but for the young Kakashi. That reaction was utterly hilarious. You see, after catching up with Koyuki and going with Kakashi to bringing her to the office, Tsunade signed the papers she brought with her and turned to Haddock, saying that she was happy for him and his brand new fiancé to be. Kakashi then looked at the Hokage and then Koyuki, dropped his book, and then dropped himself, stiff-bodied and non-moving. For hours. That was how long it took for Kakashi to wake up. And four hours worth of pictures for Naruto to use in exploitation. The pictures will indeed get him to teach me those jutsu I have been asking for, said Naruto resolutely to himself. But alas, work had to be done. Apparently a Karikaga representative was coming to town tomorrow, and Naruto had to be the ambassador and show her around. The thoughts were endless. He's father, I know I wanted to change the nation into a place of true peace, but I never imagined things would get like this, mumbled Naruto to nobody. It seemed as if he was literally the centerpiece to everything. Without him, a lot of these unions would not be working. But then there were the interactions with all of these women that had nothing to do with alliances that made him even more confused. He know with the dinner tonight, Hinata, not to mention Shion asking him to. Being a priestess is my duty. How's that Naruto? Naruto chuckled as he finally got her to be responsible, but kept quiet as it looked like she was not done talking. Shion looked over at the view of her place before speaking again. And my power must be passed on to the next priestess. What do you say, Naruto? Are you going to help me? Not seeing the shocked reaction from Sakura, Kakashi and Lee, Naruto placed his thumbs up and grinned. Sure, I'll do whatever it takes. Naruto suddenly jumped out of the bed from what he remembered from that mission in Demon Country. No. In a mad dash, Naruto left his room, ran down the stairs, opened up the door and closed it before opening it back and yelling that he would be right back. With a cloud of dust following him, Naruto jumped over the gate of his house and took the short route throughout the village as fast as possible. He needed some advice. Kanoha Hospital. Sakura sat down in contemplation with her bento and tea on the roof during her break from her shifts. Getting the new hospital program and section up and running was something else it seems. Luckily, with help from Karen and many other new people who were now an integral part of the village, the transition was much smoother this time around. It was pretty peaceful in these times of Kanoha. Everything seemed to be going really well. Her and Sasuke, her genin were thriving in training, Tsunade seemed less stressed out these days and Naruto. Well Naruto completely changed. Where is he anyway? I haven't seen him in weeks, she mumbled to herself. A loud rumble was heard before a figure jumped up from the side of the hospital, body blinded by the sun. The figure landed and a huge dust cloud followed in its wake before stopping right in front of Sakura, who absentmindedly grabbed her bento and tea from being blown away as well. After adjusting to the glare of the sun, she looked at the exact person she was talking to as he breathed in and out from his mad dash. Naruto, I was just thinking about you, said Sakura happily. It is truly too late Sakura, we have been over this many times. My love for you is like that of a sister, though if you are willing to let go of that title, I would be more than happy to Naruto never got the opportunity to finish his sentence, as an irate Sakura decked him from his chin and sent him flying off the rooftop of the hospital and into the sky, spit flowing in his disappearance. Eventually his form became a star, disappearing from sight. So much for joking around with you, said the real Naruto who was sitting on the bench she just got out of to handle him. You are just like your sensei, mumbled Sakura. This banter had been going on for years, Naruto flirting, Sakura swinging. It was very reminiscent of Tsunade and Jiraiya, and when asked why, Naruto would simply say he was paying homage to his past sensei. It didn't make it right in Sakura's book. But she did find it amusing, and it was something she secretly enjoyed. If it helped Naruto cope with the loss of his sensei, she was willing to let it be. I know. Hey, do you remember that mission with Xion? 
asked Naruto seriously. I do, I didn't think she would be here so soon for what she asked from you, said Sakura in surprise, but no real astonishment was seen in her facial features. What did I sign up for in my dense days? Naruto asked innocently. Well, you basically said yes to a request to being the baby daddy to the next demon county priestess, congratulations. Said Sakura sarcastically, but Naruto knew exactly what she just said to him. Father? He said, face turning pale as a sheet of paper. Slowly falling over onto the floor, his soul exited his body and screamed out loud in shock. Two kids in a month, you are well on your way to accomplishing your clan, said Sakura, relishing and torturing Naruto. Soul returning to his body. Naruto shook his head. Ino is going to kill me, mumbled Naruto, causing Sakura to raise her eyebrow. Why would she do that? Her and Shion hang out all the time, she thinks it's sweet that you're willing to provide an heir for Shion, said Sakura. Really? Asked Naruto hopefully. He did not think Ino would see it like that, even if they weren't dating, it would definitely seem a little off-putting to have so many women in his life all of a sudden. No, she broke a couple tables when she got home, maybe teaching her Tsunade's special fighting style wasn't the best move, said Sakura seriously, making Naruto's soul leave his body once more. Well, my shift is done, but I am sure things will work out for you, if you really think about it, nobody else in Kanoha can handle the tasks that you get. I truly think you deserve all the accomplishment that are coming your way, and I cannot wait to serve you when you receive that nomination, we all know you are going to get soon enough, said Sakura, giving Naruto a true hug to help him calm down. Naruto sighed and nodded. You're right, thank you Sakura-chan, you always know how to make me see things logically instead of foolishly. Sakura interrupted with a smirk. Naruto gritted his teeth and tried to hold his twitching eyebrow before straining his voice and replying. Yeah, that. Well somebody has to be the leader of this new San and they have been calling us, and you and I both know Sasuke would rather fight and move on to the next task. So anytime dummy, she chided. You do realize that I still have every single piece of that mission from before Sasuke came back right? And now it was Sakura's turn to change into a pale white. Yes, be very careful in what you say to me Sakura Haim, I can change this entire place with one photo, be a good girl, and we won't have to take it there, whispered Naruto. You promised. Said Sakura as she pointed at him. Promises are meant to be broken. But run along my friend, you have work to do, Naruto said. Sakura calmed down and turned around, slowly putting her gloves on knowing that the next sentence would be something along the lines of. You know, I have heard about like student, like teacher, but never believed it. Until just now, has anyone said that your chest is starting to fill out like. Sakura arched her body and swung a heavy punch that connected to Naruto's chin and sent him rotating in the air at mock speeds throughout the village. Tsunade ee ee. Was the last thing heard by Sakura as she took her gloves off and headed to the hospital for the next shift, smile on her face. Just like Jiraiya indeed. Later that night, Ino was stressed. But not in a bad way. After learning about the fact that Naruto was basically the number one bachelor and how he had received about four marriage requests from four different women in four different nations, seeing Xian and hearing about how he was about to be a father and then become a father again, not to mention seeing Hinata, it really made her feel as if she was being played around with. She felt like he was messing around with her and nobody messed with her emotions. But, after breaking the fifth table and calming down, she thought about it logically. Naruto was not a heartbreaker, he just didn't seem like someone who messed around with women. He was an honest man. You can tell everything from looking into his eyes. And she had been trained on how to break things down, and when she did. She came to the conclusion that when it came to her shot with Naruto, it was pretty much the risk she was willing to go for. Nobody had been able to get her in a frenzy like this, it didn't make much sense to her, she was not a sharing kind of girl. She wanted him to herself in all honesty. But that would never be the case, so she might as well enjoy the time she could get now, before finding someone else if it didn't work out. Besides, she could be one of the lucky people to say she used to date a cage, who wouldn't want to tell that to their sons and daughters. But what if it did work out? What if she did fall in that word with Naruto Uzumaki? A knock on the door interrupted her future thoughts. He's here already? She said to herself as she made her way to the door. Opening the door, Ino looked at the brown shoes, the dull orange pants, the brown belt and the white linen shirt of Naruto, before looking at his hands, in which he was holding a bouquet of flowers and some exclusive sake from Takigakur. Naruto's face turned red as a tomato however when he looked at Ino. Her hair was down and curled as she wore a purple skirt that stopped above her knee, with a pink blouse and no shoes. Simple, yet stunning. Hi, he said. Hi, she nearly whispered. Opening the door wider, she received the flowers and inhaled the scent. These are beautiful, Ino commented. I am glad you like them, I picked them myself, said Naruto as he placed a drink on the table. Placing them in a vase, Ino turned around and sat down at the table. The house was pretty simple, Naruto surmised. 
from the entrance were two doors on the right, one he supposed was Ino's room, and the other was for Sakura, the doors being painted purple and pink, also helped a lot, the next door was for the bathroom, and directly across from him was the kitchen, to the right led to the living room, with a couch and normal necessities, and three paces from the TV led to a glass door that led to a balcony with a nice view of Konoha. Directly in the center was where they were currently. So what do you have in store for little Almi to consume? Asked Naruto. The witch Ino simply went to the kitchen and returned with a huge bowl. Of Raymond. Naruto's mouth watered and his eyes widened at the huge side of the bowl of Raymond. I made it myself using some herbs and spices my family is known for, I hope you like it. Now a thing about Naruto is, anybody that had the ability to cook Raymond went under his important list. For years, A.M. and Tucci had been up there for the great care they put into cooking this kami given gift. So it when Naruto took a sip of the broth. And he put the spoon down. And he stood up. Grabbed a surprised Eno and hugged her, she was right there and then added to the list. I love this meal. I really do, this this glorious masterpiece is something only you can provide, and no one has been able to mix nutmeg and salt in the right quantity like you do. Not to mention the amount of chili oil is just right, not too spicy, but enough to cool the tongue, the miso is evenly put in with the dashi, eggs perfectly boiled and mixed well, Eno you are a genius, said Naruto, passionate in everything. You got all of that from one sip. Said Eno, beyond lost for words at how he broke down her entire recipe. I am serious about Raymond, said Naruto as he finally let her go to finish the Raymond. Eno smirked and allowed him to continue eating, happy to have served him his favorite meal and him liking it so much. So what has been going on in your life? Asked Eno, waiting for him to divulge the information she already knew about him. Sensing danger, Naruto came out guns blazing. You already know what I am about to speak about, so tell me what you have questions about, and I will answer them, said Naruto as he sat up and looked at Eno with a cocky smirk. Eno wasted no time firing the questions. Is it true that you are to be wedded to Tamari? What is this about Anko being pregnant? Did you promise Shan to father her child? What is going on with Hinata and you? Is Samui another person in this factor, and why is Kuritsuchi here in Konoha? Asked Eno at rapid speed. Yes. Anko is pregnant, long story, emotions took over. With Xiang, apparently I did say that I would, and I never go back on my word, so that has to happen, Hinata knows about what is going on, and shockingly is willing to agree with it, Samui is a Kumo representative, and she has the option of selecting any shinobi to represent Konoha in the union, I enjoy the time spent with her and if I am chosen, I will honor it. Kuritsuchi is here to be wedded to another person in Konoha, as well. I do not know who they have selected officially, rumor has it that my name is at the top of the list though. Anything else? Naruto said. What do you feel about me? Eno asked without hesitation. Years of interrogation will get rid of all the nervousness. Naruto looked at Eno for a while before moving the bowl to the side and grabbing her hands. I like you and I enjoy my time with you. Spending time with you makes me forget about all the worries, we are peas in a pod, yet the little things always add up to me when it comes to you. I want to continue to get to know you more and hopefully my situations do not come in conflict with that, if it does, I understand. But if you think about it, only the unpredictable occurs for the most unpredictable ninja in the nation, said Naruto with a bit of mirth at the end. Ino sighed before nodding her head in agreement. What happens if I choose to continue in this friendship with you? Asked Ino in a low voice. Naruto smiled. Simple. I do my best to make you happy, said Naruto as if speaking about the weather. Ino closed her eyes and made a decision. Morning Kanoha Gates. Naruto stood at the gate, awaiting the arrival of the Kiri representative. It seemed as if the situations were getting tighter and tighter as time went on. I hope. No. I pray that this is it. No more women. Natashiko village. A woman stood behind the envoy sent to Konoha with the most important message that they needed to deliver. It seems you have the power to change this village Shizuka-sama. Shizuka smiled. Take care Takiwa-san. As the group moved on to the village of the Hidden Leaf, Takiwa smiled. Tsunade, that message came just in the nick of time, all she has been thinking about is. Uzumaki Naruto, said a voice. Naruto wiped his nose from the sneeze and the chill down his spine as to what he just thought about. Looking up at the person who called him, Izumo pointed at the carriage in the distance. It was time to welcome the Kiri envoy. Naruto nodded and after a while, the side of the big Kiri emblem was in full view, after what seemed like a while, the carriage pulled up and the men protecting the sides instantly stood at attention before one went to open the door. And as the doors opened, two sandals stepped out and climbed the steps before they touched the pavement, and as Naruto's eyes went up on the figure, he made eye contact. To a beautiful and powerful Kinoichi that was looking back at him with a very passionate look in her eyes. Schooling his surprise, Naruto brought his formal side out. He had no plans on messing this up for Konoha. Page sama said Naruto, as he bowed at the waist. Naruto-kun, said Mei, with that specific look still held within her eyes. 
Naruto remained diplomatic and extended his arm for her to take as he led her through the village in the hidden leaves. I am guessing that the representative for Kiri is coming later. Asked Naruto. May giggled. You would be smart to assume so. However that is not the case anymore, as a set of changes have occurred within my village, said the cage. If you don't mind me asking, what changes have been put in place? Asked Naruto. It was this that May's relaxed face turned absolutely devious. The new Mizukage has taken the seat and I have offered myself as the representative for Kiri and it just so happens that I have already made my selection. Gripping Naruto's arm tighter, May leaned forward towards a frozen Naruto and whispered in his ear. You will make a fine husband, Yuzumaki Naruto. Okage's office, Harumi Mei, recent representative of the Alliance of All the Nations, sat with Tsunade as the two exchanged pleasantries. In the background stood Naruto, frozen solid and stuck with the same face he had since May told him of why she was here. Periodically, blood would leak from his nose before quickly getting wiped away. He was going to be wedded to her. Well, it seems he is absolutely astounded about this new stipulation taking place, said May. Tsunade smirked. Of course he would be, I didn't let him know until just now after all. I have taken the liberty of getting a room prepared at his clan house for you to get to know one another better. Of course, a lot is going on with the recent developments taking place. Whatever do you mean? Asked May in curiosity. Well started Tsunade. Four hours ago, Samui sat down with Tsunade, Shizun behind her, to begin the meeting. Have you officially decided the person you would like to be married to to fulfill this alliance with Kumo? Asked Tsunade. Samui nodded. I have selected. Three hours ago, Tsunade opened the letter sent from Iwa. We have selected the shinobi to fulfill our deed in the Grand Alliance Inn. Two hours ago, Tsunade sat with a smirking Tamari. I have selected. One hour ago, the Ashi Hyuga sighed as he placed the scroll in the hands of Tsunade. My daughter has her mind set and will not change it. It is her choice of entering wedlock with. Recently, Namaka's Yuzumaki Naruto, said Tsunade with a smirk. It seems the man has become quite the option for many Kinoichi, May said. But it seems you no longer have to worry about that based off what we spoke about, said Tsunade. Indeed, said May. Looking at the still frozen Naruto, Tsunade grabbed a paper clip and sent it for his head, Naruto subconsciously catching it before waking up out of his stupor. May you do the honor of escorting your wife to be to her future home? Asked Tsunade. Robotically, Naruto took the hand of May and without any sort of rebuttal, led her to his clan house. Tsunade fell into her seat before chuckling diabolically, reminiscent of the later Achimaru. It seems, your good looks and charm has doomed your son into the most important piece for the Grand Alliance, said Tsunade as she looked at the portrait of Minato Namikas, amused at all the suitors wanting the same person. This will either create perfect harmony or perfect disaster, said Shizun. Oh, but this is just getting started dear Shizun, we still have another one on her way to the village as we speak, said Tsunade. Shizun paled. Poor Naruto, Tsunade shook her head. No. There is nothing poor about Naruto now. If anything, many would call him lucky Naruto, said Tsunade. And I want grandchildren to spoil. Shizun's sweat dropped. Hours later, sitting out in the backyard, watching Kayashi swim in the pond, Naruto and Mei sat down in the grass getting to know each other. After the initial shock, Naruto was back to his regular self as he got to know this strong cage-leveled Kinoichi, who was both beautiful inside and out. I have to truly ask this said Naruto suddenly. Why have I selected to step down and be used as the main piece to the alliance? Asked Mei. No. Why me? Mei smirked. Why not? You have the qualities that men older than me are still in training to get, not to mention I have the perfect setup for every single question. With the age thing, it is simply a number, with my position, it was time for a change of scenery, with my abilities, it is only right that the clan lives on, said May. Plan at this Naruto's brain moved faster than ever before. Red hair, Kiri, Jutsu, Water, Whirlpool, Yuzumaki. What what is your real last name? Naruto said seriously. May giggled again. Congratulations on finally figuring out the last name change. My true name is May Yuzumaki of the late Yuzumaki clan. And as per law of our clan, when the clan is dwindled down to two or less members, the clan must preserve with that one member in order to strengthen the bloodline, Naruto titled his head to the side. Which means this not only has to do with the alliance, but family, finished Mei. Thanks.